football, so that kind of explains it right there. The folks knew Kellen was coming today, so when we walked into the stadium, their scoreboard read, Sooners 37, Missouri nothing from the game three weeks ago. Now, on the flip side for the Cowboys, since Bob Simmons arrived in 1995, he is 3-1 against the Sooners and 2-0 and here in Norman. But Bob Simmons is much more than just a football coach. Bob Simmons is a spiritual man, and when he took command of an underachieving Oklahoma State football squad, the fans felt he was heaven sent. I had a three-year and a five-year plan, and one of the things that, uh, that I really wanted to do was uh, establish some retention in the program and do that over a period of time where we could get things changed around. He did change things around. The road to recovery for the Cowboys began in 1995. In his first year at the helm, the Pope shut out state rival Oklahoma in Norman. It was OSU's first win over the Sooners since 1976, and the first time OSU held Oklahoma scoreless in 50 years. And this moment was groundbreaking towards Simmons' foundation for winning. It's good to come in and win games against your in-state rival, uh, and that was a big game uh, for Oklahoma State, and we were able to establish some things in terms of, of, of winning that game year in and year out. Fast forward to 1997. The Cowboys cap off an 8-4 season with an appearance in the Alamo Bowl. Not since 1988, in the days of Heisman Trophy winner Barry Sanders, had Oklahoma State football been riding so high. Anytime you have that kind of success, I and mean, I think you need it when you're building the program, and the fact that we could do it in our, our third season was a blessing. Simmons has been blessed both on and off the field. His players respect him like a father, and one player in particular, Nathan Simmons, gets to call him Pops as well as coach. Whether I call him coach or Pops, it really doesn't matter. He's, he's the same man. He's going to treat me uh, the same way. There's a fine line between coaching your your son and coaching as a player. But uh, all throughout my life, my father's been the biggest influence as in uh, academics, athletics, and spiritual spiritual life. Uh, as a uh, father, it makes me feel good to really uh, be a part of his life uh, and to have him a part of his football team. Uh, he has done everything that, that I've asked him to do, and uh, as a family, it's good to be close together. Last year, the family's strengths were put to the test when Simmons finally revealed a secret that he had kept from the public, his team, even his son. He kept his health problem a secret for years. Uh, I really didn't know until uh, about a week before the surgery what was really going on. Amazingly, Bob's wife, Linda, was the one to give him the greatest gift of all, the gift of life. Going into the 98 season, uh, I had a kidney transplant. Uh, I got a gift from God and a gift from my wife. Uh, and obviously that was uh, a very, uh, 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 very touching moment in my life. We're blessed to have uh, him in great health right now. You know, God has really just kept him together and gave him a, a good bill of health. With a new lease on life, Coach Simmons predicts that his future as a cowboy is bright. He has his goals and spirits aimed high. My future goals is continuing to uh, reach, continuing to dream and to build. Uh, the where this program is consistently, uh, and so we, we can strive for the ultimate package, and that's not only winning, but that's to win the national championship. Bob Simmons, a good football coach and a very good man, but of course the important part is that he has beat the Sooners three times in the last four years, and that is the thing that most fans at Oklahoma State will point to. Kevin, one thing that Coach Simmons has, a lot of coaches don't, he's got the ability to evaluate talent, he's got that natural eye. He did it when he was at West Virginia and helped Don Nealon turn that program around. He went to Colorado with Coach Mack and helped put that program back on the map. Now he's here at Oklahoma State. He's bringing in great talent, and they're doing a wonderful job, especially against state rival Oklahoma. And you hear the roar here in Memorial Stadium. Here come the Sooners as they take the field as we count down towards Bedlam. We're getting close to kickoff time. We'll be back with more. An electric atmosphere and a perfect day here in Norman. Welcome back to College Football Saturday, coming to you live from Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. Kellen, time to put you on the spot. Who do you like in this game, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State? Well, I tell you, Oklahoma State's got a lot to cover up with those three defensive back missing. Josh Heupel, I like we have a big day. I like Oklahoma in this ball game. All right, yeah, it will be tough. They're missing three of the four defensive backs in their defensive backfield. The Cowboys are, so it will be tough. Right now, let's get it upstairs so the guys are ready to call today's game. Ron Thulin and Artie Gigantino. Guys, it's all yours. 
Thank you, gentlemen. And, of course, we are expecting some diverse offense today. Both teams have excellent quarterbacks. One is a pure passer. The other can beat you with his arm. He can beat you with his leg. But what they do have in common, they are both game breakers. And, you know, Josh Heupel from the University of Oklahoma, the junior college transfer that's come in, he's like a coach on the field. He calls audibles about 70% of the time. And he operates out of the shotgun. On the other side of the field, Tony Lindsay is much more of a mobile quarterback. He'll run the option. He'll spread out the defense. But look for him not only to throw the ball well today, Ron, but he'll take off and make a big play with his feet. Well, the Oklahoma State defense is pretty good. They're 11th in the NCAA. Now, their defensive coordinator, Rob Ryan, said, if I was a genius, I'd find a way to play all my linebackers. They are a talented group, but they're led by Kenyatta Wright. Watch number seven today. He's very quick in between the tackles. He's a punishing attacker. He leads his team in tackles, and usually where the football is, you'll see number seven. He's not only good against the run, but look for him to do some damage against his Oklahoma crossing patterns in the passing game. He'll knock down a receiver or two when he's dropped into his own. Well, Oklahoma State is now just all uh, defense. They also have some pretty good offense and a running back by the name of Jamal Fox. For more on him, here's Eric Clemens. Okay, Ron, you know, Oklahoma State has to excel in every facet to stay close against this high-powered Oklahoma offense. And speaking of multifaceted, Jamal Fox is their man. He leads the team with 523 yards rushing, averages more than 10 yards per reception out of the backfield, also leads him with 508 kickoff return yards so far this season. He averages is 120.9 yards of all-purpose offense. He's going to have to match or exceed that if he's to keep Bob Simmons and this Oklahoma State team pretty close. We'll keep up with his all-purpose yards all game long, guys. Thank you very much, Eric Clemens. An absolutely spectacular day here in Norman, Oklahoma, as we take a look at the game plan for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Artie? What that defense has got to do for Oklahoma State is keep Josh Heupel off balance by blitzing and disguising their coverages. Oklahoma State has got to execute the trick plays and the special plays, and they've got to have success in their punt return and punt block units. And the Oklahoma Sooners under Bob Stoops have broken out of a five-year period that the school went without a winning record. He has a winning record this year, and his game plan looks like this. His offense must adjust to the blitzes. They've got to be patient because Oklahoma State is going to get some key plays and some negative plays in the blitzes. They've got to run for 100 yards. In the four games they've lost this year, they've averaged 30 yards per game. And lastly, the Oklahoma defense has got to contain Tony Lindsay and just do a great job against Terrence Richardson in the punt return game. All in all, Ron, this is a really good matchup. It's strength against strength for both teams. Absolutely. This is exactly what we thought it would be. Tim Duncan set to kick it away. The sophomore out of Clinton, Oklahoma. Oklahoma State won the toss, and they have elected to receive. Jamal Fobbs is in the middle. He's joined by Reggie White. There is the Cowboys waiting for the kick. T.D. Bryant is also back. Duncan gets every bit of that one, and that will go deep into the end zone, and the Oklahoma State Cowboys will begin on offense from their own 20-yard line. This is an offense that has struggled at times due to the fact that Tony Lindsay has played only five games. He's had numerous injury problems, a shoulder, a knee, which he suffered in the first game of the season, a hamstring problem, but this young man really got into his rhythm last week. And everybody tells us that Tony Lindsay is back and doing what they expected him and to do. And rhythm is the right word, because when you lose your quarterback, the guy who's been engineering the offense during training camp, when you lose him in the first game, it really hurts your offense. They were expecting such great things from him this year. Simmons, the lone setback on first and ten. Lindsay fakes it, looking into the flat, pass is complete. Up to Kari Jackson, he has some running room. Inside the 50, down to the OU 47-yard line. A little play-action pass, good for 37 yards from Tony Lindsay to Kari Jackson, the senior out of Detroit. What's going to happen here? It's a bootleg to Lindsay's right. Jackson takes a block, runs out in the flat, and he's wide open. Obviously, the Oklahoma defense had some confusion because it was a two tight end, two wide receiver formation that time for OSU. Now Simmons and Kevin Brown in the eye formation. First and ten inside OU 50 yard line. They give it to Simmons. And he is going to be stacked up, not much running room. The Oklahoma State offensive line, Richard Preston Kyle Eaton anchors it. He's out of Roger, Texas. He's out of front of an offensive line that had to be reshuffled a couple of times this year. They've given up 40 sacks. And of course, the running back we just saw, Nathan.
Justin Simmons coming off knee surgery. His knee surgery was slowed down this year. He is going to be carrying time with Jamal Fives in that tailback spot. The numbers on Simmons this year. Look for a lot of substitution with this Oklahoma State offense. They substitute wide receivers, backs, and tight ends a great deal. On second and ten, Lindsey's pass is incomplete. Off the fingertips of the tight end, Brian Blackwood. The pass was there, he just couldn't haul it down. Let's take a look at the Oklahoma defense. Still in a learning process of Mike Stoops' defense. Barry Holloman, the sophomore from Oklahoma City, leads the defensive line with four sacks this season. Armand Spence, the junior out of St. Louis, starting in place of the injured Rocky Kalmus. They think Kalmus might be able to play in the game. And then Mike Woods, a quarterback, the senior out of Dell City, Oklahoma, he is their best cover guy. Third down and 10, ball on the Oklahoma 43-yard line, first possession of the game. And this is an empty formation. You see here, there are no backs in the backfield, only the quarterback. Five players are split out. The quick look in pass, incomplete. Into the hands of Jackson, he was hit immediately by Corey Heineke, the defensive end, the sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma. And the Cowboys pick up 37 on their first play and are stopped by Oklahoma the next three. Jackson is the slot here to the bottom of your screen. Lindsey gets the ball in the shotgun, delivers a quick pass, but Jackson cannot hold on to it. What they're trying to do there is spread out the Oklahoma defense. And Jarrell Jackson, number 32 in the NCAA, averaging almost 11 yards of return, standing on his 10-yard line. Jackson saying, get away from it. They kick it away from Jackson, and it is a beauty. And it will be stopped right at the three-yard line. A kick of 41 yards, nothing on the return, and we have a penalty flag thrown. There's going to be a personal foul with a late block that time against Oklahoma State. But as you mentioned, Ron, the ball was punted away from Jackson. And that's good coaching because don't put the ball into the hands of a great return man. One thing Oklahoma State wanted their team to do is they wanted to come out with a lot of emotion. Oklahoma said they wanted contained emotion, but this isn't a smart play. Now, right at the top, you're going to see a late hit that time by number 51 from Oklahoma State. You cannot do that, especially now with the flag. The officials are very cognizant of the emotion. And number 51, Jack Golden, has just got to control himself. So Oklahoma, instead of being on their own four-yard line, the ball is pushed up all the way to the 18-yard line, so they get a little bit of running room. And the Sooners with that potent offense. Number 11 in total offense in the NCAA. Josh Heupel, their quarterback. Fumble. Ball is loose. Oklahoma State has it at the 10. So Golden makes up for the brain cramp at the four-yard line, and he comes up with a loose ball. A blitz that time by Oklahoma State as Heupel was going to hand the ball off to Quentin Griffin running around. He misses the handoff, and the blitzing linebacker falls on the football. One of the things that happens when there's a threat of blitz, sometimes the quarterback gets a little bit nervous, and he's not quite as smooth in handling the football. Well, that's the 20th fumble for the Sooners this year. They have lost 12. They have been costly because their turnover margin is not good. And you can see Oklahoma State's numbers from the red zone. First and goal from the 10, a little razzle-dazzle. They fumble the ball, and Oklahoma has it! Anthony Davis comes up with a loose ball, the senior out of El Reno, Oklahoma. Interesting call here. You're going to see the reverse develop. Jamal Fobbs is lined up as a wide receiver. He comes around and tries to get the handoff from Nathan Simmons, but they mishandle the football. Yep. Unbelievable turn of events here very early in the game. As you see, number 47, Ahmad Spence, ball on the football. My goodness. Well, once the emotion settles down, the bottom line is you have to execute, and neither team has done that so far. Well, you know, we talked about the trick plays. Oklahoma State was going to run, but they had to execute them. So Oklahoma regains possession. They swing the pass out quickly. A lot of running room, and Oklahoma picks up major yardage on their first pass play. Pass was completed to Brandon Daniels. 
It's a quick screen to the outside. You're going to see on the bottom of your screen, Daniels is right here. The ball is going to be delivered perfectly, and this is almost like a running play because he gets the ball, he comes inside, he catches it, and he racks run after catch. That's a, that's a great way, Ron, of disguising a run. Throw the ball quickly out to a wide receiver. Pickup of 24 on the play, and the Oklahoma coaches have stressed. As soon as you catch the ball, turn up field. Penalty flag is thrown. We had some motion. And, you know, you talked about the word rack, but they have, in their completions this year, they've had almost 1,700 yards in run after Dead ball. passes. I'll start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, the Oklahoma offense is the number one passing offense in the Big 12. They're led by the junior, Josh Heupel, completing 62% of his passes. He's thrown 28 touchdowns this year. Just about every passing record in Oklahoma history. He has had a sensational year. And he's been the perfect fit for what Oklahoma does on offense. From the shotgun on first down and 15, Heupel throws it out of the flat. The pass is again complete. And again, running room for Seth Luttrell. Latrell, his father, Jim Latrell, played in many OU-OSU games, picks up good yardage, pick up a 15 on the play, and that'll be another OU first down as we take a look at the rest of the Oklahoma offense. Stocker McDougal, the senior, the right tackle from Corsicana, Texas, is big, and he might be playing in the NFL next year. And, of course, we've already seen number eight, Brandon Daniels, the senior out of Ada, Oklahoma, the former starting quarterback. He is now their leading receiver. Oklahoma first and 10. Ball on the OSU 47-yard line. A lot of fireworks in the early going. Eiffel, little shuttle pass. To Clinton Griffin. He has some running room. Penalty flag is thrown right at the 40 as Griffin slips at the 35. Chris Massey on the stop. Oklahoma State has had some problems this year with the delay type of runs. The shuffle passes, the draws, because they do such a good job of rushing the passer, they're vulnerable sometimes to the draws and the quick hitting type plays. That time it's a hold against the University of Oklahoma. Steve Juszczyk, our referee this afternoon, part of an excellent Big 12 crew on, on hand for the game. And once again, Oklahoma will go backwards. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty for the start of the foul. Repeat first down. Well, when you talk about people having success here in Norman, you have to talk about Bob Simmons. We already talked about what he did when he was as head coach at Oklahoma State, but he was also undefeated as an assistant at Colorado and at West Virginia. He is 6-0 against Norman, or against Oklahoma here in Norman. That's quite a record. Not many people can no. say that. Well, Oklahoma pushed back. It'll be first down, 14. Ball on the 49, and they run a razzle-dazzle. Heifel misses the block. And that is going to go absolutely nowhere. Fagan trying to get something out of it, and he is going to be dropped at the 45-yard line. And the OSU defense, as we mentioned, number 11 in the NCAA. They like to confuse and attack. Jaquay Thomas at defensive end, the junior out of Houston, leads in both sacks and tackles for a loss. Kenyatta right. Middle linebacker, he anchors that middle spot, and Adam Edwards, the lone senior in the secondary, as they are missing three starters due to suspension. And, of course, Marcellus Rivers, the outstanding tight end, also suspended for this game. Big, big losses for the Cowboys. A very unusual formation here at the top of your screen with three wide receivers lined up in tandem. They call this their stack. It was successful against Texas Tech. But Heupel keeps it on the ground straight ahead to Josh Norman. What happened there is Heifel did not like the defense that Oklahoma State was using against that stack outside. So he audible to a run and elected not to throw the football. That is a passing formation. And as we talked about, this guy loves to audible at the line of scrimmage. And he is a lot of the reason why that third down success is so good for Oklahoma, because he audibles correctly most of the time. Now, he said he was terrible last year, audible, or last week, audible. Well, against penalty Texas. flag is thrown yeah. against Texas Tech. He said he didn't audible to the run enough, and he said he wanted to rectify it this week. Penalty flag before anybody even lines up. And, and, what, like that, substitution. and what that means, Ron, for our viewers, is the fact that he has got the right at the Get line back. of scrimmage. All start on the center. Pick the ball up. Five-yard penalty. 
He's got the right at the line of scrimmage to change the play. Now, Bobby Stoops does not like that call. He says, hey, the center's got to move the ball. He's got to snap it. Oklahoma is not a penalized team a whole lot this year. They average only seven penalties a game for 56 yards, much better than they had last year. They were one of the most penalized teams. Yeah, and and that's, a, that's excellent. That's excellent. They only have seven a game. Well, they that's already excellent. have three this afternoon. Third down, now 21. Heupel under center being rushed. He is going to be dropped. No, he gets away. And he gets the pass away, but it is incomplete. Terrell Knowles is the one who put the quarterback pressure on, number 32, the senior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, but he got away from it. Well, Rob Ryan told us he was going to blitz. Now watch Knowles right here. He's going to come up, but credit Heupel for doing a great job of staying alive. Now what Knowles is just going to do, he's got to slow down because if the quarterback sees him coming, he can juke him to the side. That's exactly what happened. Good scheme, though, by Oklahoma State. Now Ferguson set to kick it away to Terrence Richardson. He is extremely dangerous, number seven in the NCAA. They were concerned about his returns. Richardson being backed up, takes it at the three. Back pedal, dropped immediately. 51 yards on the kick, nothing on the return, and Oklahoma State will begin possession with their backs to the wall. We have a timeout, 10.22 left to play in the first. We are scoreless. On Fox Sports Net is brought to you by the people inspired to build vehicles for your mind and heart. Nissan, driven. Sellout crowd of well over 80,000 inside a Memorial Stadium on Owen Field. The final battle matchup of the millennium, and we are scoreless, and we have had everything so far, along with Artie Gigantino, Eric Clemens, Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow, our entire crew is here as Oklahoma State first and ten from their own three-yard line. Not much running room as they try to bust against that Oklahoma State defense. Oklahoma that time had nine men around the line of scrimmage. Very difficult to run against that. You're going to see the right guard, Adam Davis, pull, and he gets stuffed in the hole, and there's nowhere to run up inside. That's good, solid defense that time by Oklahoma. Now you look at these guys over here on defense, they don't blitz a lot. They play a lot of zone and a lot of man, but they are not a blitzing defense. Not much of a pass rushing team. Second down and nine, Lindsey will drop back. Throws into the flat, pass is caught, almost dropped, but he's able to bring it in as Brian Blackwood. Now they're saying incomplete, it did hit the ground and Blackwood can't believe it. Well, he did a little juggling act. Could not bring it in. The tight end position has been very productive for Oklahoma State this year. But with Rivers being suspended, Blackwood, and Jackson, and Steggs, the other three tight ends have got to step up their game. You can't drop those tight passes. Now, that's Ron Calcagni right there, the offensive coordinator, ex-Arkansas quarterback, and he loves throwing the football to the tight end. Had a little experience in the Canadian Football League, and it is translated in that Oklahoma State offense. On third down, they keep it on the ground straight ahead. Running room for Fobbs. Trying to strip the ball away, but not before Fobbs makes his way up to the 15-17 yard line. Roy Williams is the one who tried to pull the ball away, but that'll be a first down for the Cowboys. Fobbs did a good job of getting upfield, so watch the right guard here. Watch good old Adam Davis. He's going to do a great job of starting up the field. He hits the nose guard, and then he comes off and hits the linebacker. That is outstanding offensive guard play by Adam Davis. Pick up a 13 on the play, and it gets Oklahoma State out of the hole. Fobbs is the tailback. Kevin Brown, the fullback, and the offset eye. They swing it out to Fobbs, has a little bit of room. Tries to get outside, but he is going to be dropped right at the 15 by William Barty, the senior out of Daytona Beach, Florida. That'll be a loss of, the, of a yard on the play. Oklahoma State would like to get the ball to Fobbs as much as possible in the open field like that, but also line him up as a wide receiver. But he's not going to go anywhere when guys like Barty make open field plays like that. Bob Simmons is a patient man. He's a patient man with his offense and his defense, and he knows that he's got to be patient today in order to win this football game. Second and 11. 
Brown moving over from the fullback spot. Lindsey will run the option. Keeps it. Hit hard as he crosses the 18-yard line by Rodney Rideau. And we have a penalty flag thrown. Rideau, the senior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. An emotional player, Rodney Rideau is the leader of this secondary. Yeah, we've had a lot of penalties, and it's going to be a face mask penalty, and almost, he almost lost an official. You know, Ron, when quarterbacks run the option, the face mask penalty possibility goes up because you're always reaching for the quarterback. When Oklahoma ran the option... On a defense, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. He used to be five or six face mask penalties a game. Now you're going to see Rideau, he comes in, you look at his right arm right there, and grabs the face mask of Lindsey. It's because you're always kind of stretching and always kind of chasing the quarterback. Now it's the lesser of the penalties. It was only a five-yard right. infraction, so it's second down and two. They spot the ball at the 24-yard line. Rideau, the vocal leader of the secondary. One lone setback. And it is Fobbs, lifing his way through, close to the 30-yard line. Good enough for another Oklahoma State first down. Oklahoma has been susceptible to long drives this year. We saw it in the Texas game and the Notre Dame game. And they need to have a big play early to sort of set the tone for their defense. And one of the reasons, I think, is they don't make enough big plays behind the line of scrimmage. And the reason is they don't blitz a lot. In order to make big plays behind the line of scrimmage, you got to turn these down guys loose, like 92 Corey Callen, and blitz a little bit more. They try to just play solid defense. Another first down for the Cowboys. Another play action pass. Lindsey looking over the middle, has a man, short hops it incomplete. Almost picked off by Roy Williams, the redshirt freshman out of Union City, California. You know, you're Mike Stoops. Mike, Mike Stoops is right here. He's the younger brother of head coach Bob Stoops. He's the defensive coordinator. He was at Kansas State a year ago, did a great job there, and he's trying to get this Oklahoma defense to play like his Kansas State defenses did the last three years. And his brother, of course, 39-year-old Bob Stoops out of Youngstown, Ohio, both played collegiately at Iowa. Second down and 10 from the 28-yard line. Sooner's showing blitz. Lindsey goes the opposite way, directs traffic. This is how Lindsey can beat you, but the Sooners do a good job containing the fleet-footed uh, sophomore. Roy Williams coming up from the strong safety spot. Lindsey really can stretch the field, and we saw it there. Everybody goes left, Lindsey goes right, and it appeared as though Tony was going to make the big play. And you look at him, he throws on the run to his right very well. He can take off and run the football, as you just saw at any time, and he's got deceptive arm strength. In other words, he doesn't look like he can throw the ball deep, but he certainly can. Watch him run today, or watch him throw the football when he's moving to his right. On third down and three, they keep it on the ground, straight ahead up to the 39-yard line. That'll be good for a first down, but we have a penalty flag thrown. Nathan Simmons on the carry. And it's going to be a hold against the Cowboys. So that is our sixth penalty of the day. Two for Oklahoma State, four for the Oklahoma Sooners. And part of the problem in big games, everybody's amped up. Everybody's over anxious, and sometimes your hand gets caught on a jersey. Of course, it's unintentional, Ron. <laughs> yeah, There's never been an offensive lineman who fell well, on purpose. On the offense, 10 yard penalty for the start of the foul. Repeat third down. May have been on the big right tackle, Josh Lynn, out of St. Girls, Charles, Missouri. Watch him, number 73. He's moving his feet, he's moving his feet. But look at that right arm. You cannot wrap your right arm around the neck of a defender, at least not in football. Yeah. That's a wrestling move right there. Now well, instead of the first down, it's third down and 11. Oklahoma State's in an unbalanced formation. There are no receivers to the bottom of the screen. Bob's in the slot to the left as Lindsey rolls to the left. Pressure on, and he goes down. Corey Heineke, number 89, a sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma, with his first sack of the year. Watch this formation. There's no wide receiver and no tight end at the bottom of the screen. Tight end is here and three receivers here. Oklahoma comes off the corner here and ends up chasing Tony Lindsey down. 
Nice job, but the coverage down the field does not allow Lindsey to throw the football. When you line up in an unbalance, you've only got a half the field in which to deal with. Scott Elder out of River Ridge, Louisiana, standing right on the goal line. Darrell Jackson at midfield. The Sooners are coming, then they back off. A short kick. Jackson telling everybody to get away, and the Oklahoma Sooners will have spectacular field position. With 5.25 left to play in the first, a 21-yard kick, and we have a timeout. We are scoreless in Norman. For the first time since 1966, Oklahoma State has a two-game win streak over the Oklahoma Sooners, trying to make it three in a row, and we are scoreless here in the first quarter. Well, with Eric Clemens and Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulin. Well, look at how deep Heifel is. He steps up to the line of scrimmage. He calls an audible. Look at his hand motions there. He's telling everybody, I'm changing the play. OSU on the draw as OSU is showing blitz. Still on his feet, bouncing into the inside is Quentin Griffin. The freshman out of Aldine, Texas, played high school ball at Nimitz last year. We talked about the draw play, and little guys like Hugh Griffin, as they call him, really have success against a defense that's rushing up the field all the time. He's a young player, as you said, Ron, 250 yards. These Oklahoma coaches like him. Look how deep Heifel was. He's at seven yards. Sometimes he moves back to eight. Again, look at him audible to the wide receivers. It's a hand communication. A second and three. He drops back five more. Wide open right over the middle. And he's Brandon Daniels. Inside the five, down to the four-yard line. And Heifel, after he got the snap, he went back about four or five more yards. He had great vision of where Daniels was. One of the things Oklahoma wants to do is throw the ball inside. As you see Daniels make a move to the inside, the linebacker cannot cover him. And the Sooners are knocking on the door. 4.35 to play here in the first. Even on the goal line, look at Oklahoma. They've got two receivers here and two receivers there. They have confidence in this, in this formation. Daniels cuts down Oklahoma. confidence Ron when you throw the ball on the goal line you're gonna see at the bottom of the screen number eight Daniels just catch the quick throw out and skirt into the end zone in their mind that play is like a run and there is Mike Leach the offensive coordinator co-offensive coordinator with Mark Mangino who's also with him there on the field and the sooner strike first here in the first and the extra point by Duncan is good and we have a timeout on the floor. 424 left to play. The Oklahoma Sooners have taken the early lead. For the first time in a long time, the Oklahoma Sooners have sold out every home game. This is a record crowd at Owen Field Memorial Stadium, well over 80,000. And so far, they've been treated to what they came for. Pretty good football game. Oklahoma leading 7-0. 424 left in the first. I think it's safe to say, Ron, that Oklahoma football is coming back in a strong manner. I think so, too. It is going to be five, four yards deep, and he's going to bring it out, and he is going to be done. So Terrence Richardson of Oklahoma State decided to field the punt inside the five that was stopped. Now Fobbs fields that inside the end zone and he is stopped jt factor on the stop but the touchdown was this oh this is the kick gonna see a great job here now of oklahoma coming down the field picking up Bob. wow what a play and that's momentum for this sooner defense to go into the first series with now oklahoma state has had a couple of miscues on special teams and now tony lindsey Takes over, first and ten from their own five-yard line, about five-and-a-half yard line. And again, they're back against the wall. Fobbs behind Kevin Brown in the eye formation. Have not had great field position so far this afternoon. Fobbs dancing around, not much running room. Let's go back to that Sooner score. 
The key to the touchdown is Seth Luttrell, the fullback, who's going to come out here and block the strong safety like he's a trapper blocking on a run play. You see Daniels get the ball and run right underneath the block of Seth Luttrell. Beautiful timing, great camera work, guys, and a big play that time for Oklahoma's offense. Now Oklahoma dancing around on defense. They wanted to try to confuse Tony Lindsay a little bit today. They keep it on the ground straight ahead, and the OU defense is up to the challenge. Corey Callens, the junior out of Jenks, Oklahoma, outside of Tulsa, is the one who really cut to the inside to make the stop. Callens, very active, 6'2", 258 pounds. You're going to see the ball get handed off, and you're going to see the play in the trenches that time. The Oklahoma defensive front did not go up and down the line of scrimmage. They stayed at home, and Callens makes the play. Uh, one thing Oklahoma State said they had to do, Ron Calpagny told us yesterday, is stay on schedule. They did not want third and seven, third and eight, and that's what they're facing now. But we have a timeout called. And Tony Lindsay will trot over to the sideline. The sophomore out of Denver, Colorado, grew up in the backyard of the University of Colorado. Said they didn't even recruit him. Ended up at Oklahoma State. Hello, programming note, the NFL this morning will be coming your way tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific on Fox Sports Net. Join host Chris Myers along with Jackie Slater, Chris Spielman, and Marv Levy as they preview the day's slate of NFL action. That'll be followed by Fox NFL Sunday on your local Fox affiliate. Join us tomorrow morning right here on Fox Sports Net as the NFL comes your way. As you watch this game here, you see, I think, the Oklahoma State offense has kind of lost its momentum. They came out like gangbusters, made a couple big plays, but were penalized, which took them out of good field position, and it looks like they're out of their rhythm that they started the game off with. Well, first of all, they've had some problems with their offensive line because they've had guys like Brian Phillips, who's had mononucleosis, Blaine Cook, who was a starter at left guard, has had a knee injury, and... Josh Lynn has also had some problems, Adam Davis. So they've had to reshuffle their offensive line, which has caused some confusion. Under absolutely beautiful blue skies, we are in Norman, Oklahoma, for the 1999 edition of the Bedlam Series of Football with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Major bowl implications at stake. Along with Artie and Eric, I'm Ron Thulin. We are glad you're spending your Saturday afternoon with us. Oklahoma State, a must-win situation if they want to go to the bowl. There you can see what the Cowboys have done and what they've needed to get done on third down. And OSU jumped. The left side of their offensive line picked up, and I think it might have been Kyle Eaton, the redshirt freshman out of Rogers, Texas. OSU wants to get to a bowl. They need one more win. Dead ball. Full start. Full start. And Kyle Eaton, Ron, is a, is a redshirt freshman. And quite honestly, he's probably a little bit nervous here today. We talked about that before, going against Corey Callens, who's a very good football player. Watch him right here. He's going to move. Oh, you can't do that. And the crowd had something to do with it because it's loud down yeah. in this end zone. They are in the bowl part of the end zone. No place for the sound to go. They're right down on the field. And now it is third down and 12. And Lindsey trying to direct traffic, making sure Ethan Howell knows where he's supposed to go. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. The Sooners with four on the line of scrimmage. They're showing blitz from the right side. Lindsey rolls, throws, passes short. Are they going to call it complete? Yes, they do. It is a catch. Good for a first down to Gabe Lindsey, his little brother. Tony Lindsay, the little brother Gabe. That was an excellent catch by the youngster. The redshirt freshman also out of Denver. You're going to see Lindsay roll to his left, and he just gets the ball off. But that is awful Whoa. close right there. Gabe got his hands up underneath it. The question is, did the ball touch the ground first? And I wonder if that's what the officials are talking about right there. Well, we have a penalty flag thrown on the far side of the field. Now they picked it up. Hey, fair. Well, Oklahoma State, the bottom line is they've got the football, they got the first down, and they're out to the 20-yard line. And that's what you have to start doing here. Reestablish some field position. You get out of the end zone, get out of the red zone, and move down the field. 
On first and ten, the Cowboys will keep it on the ground. Jamal Fobbs loses the football, but he was down on the play. Bob set a freshman rushing record a couple of years ago, and that has been a real source of controversy at Oklahoma State is Jamal Fobbs. A lot of people, all the fans and the media here in Oklahoma felt that Fobbs should be starting, but Nathan Simmons, the coach's son, has been starting. And they have really talked about, and they've had good reason, that maybe Nathan Simmons lost a step after his knee surgery. Well, you always lose a step after knee surgery. And again, I think both the, the, the coach, the son, and Bob have all handled that whole situation very, very well. That flag, by the way, was a sideline warning. No yardage marked off. Bob's in motion to the right. They keep it on the ground of the fullback, Kevin Brown, the senior out of McAllister, Oklahoma, who carried 17 times last week, and that's the most any fullbacks ever carried the football in one game under Bob Simmons. You know, Kevin Brown, and he went to Bob Simmons, Kevin Brown, number 30, went to Bob Simmons, and he said, hey, can I get the ball a little bit more? And Bob Simmons said, you know what, Kevin? You're right. We've got to start utilizing the fullback in our offense more. And now they're giving him the ball on run, and they're also throwing the pass. Now, here you see Oklahoma State shift to an empty formation. And you see Lindsey again directing traffic. Three wide receivers to the right. Two to the left, and a penalty flag is thrown. And Ron, while Play he was game. directing traffic, you're right. He used up too much time. Play game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. You know, there's a fine line, Ron, between asking a quarterback to do too little and too much. And sometimes when you ask him to direct too much traffic, it takes the, obviously, too much time. And Oklahoma doing a lot of jumping around on defense. We've seen OSU jump on defense, but Lindsey seems a little confused at times. There you can see the penalties. Both teams with four in practice. Third down, nine to go for the Cowboys, and it's a long nine. Again, three to the right, two to the left. The Sooners start to creep up to the line of scrimmage. They bring six, the quick pass to the tight end. Brian Blackwood, he gets up to the 30, and it will be close to the first down. Great, Might be about a half a yard short. Great read that time by Tony Lindsay of seeing Blackwood open inside on the slant pattern. Well, it is a first down. You're going to see Blackwood right here. He's going to come inside. He catches the slant pattern. Verdot comes up and tries to make the tackle, but that's 250 pounds running down the field. Good read and good delivery that time by Tony Lindsay, the quarterback. Blackwood had only seven receptions coming into this game. That is his first today, and the number's on Lindsay. Going to throw it on first down. Here comes the rush. Throwing for his life. Pass is complete up to the 34-yard line. Dakari Jackson, a short pickup. But it was major because Lindsay could have been dropped for about a 15-yard loss pick up a three on the play. That was the same play they ran at the beginning of the game for big yardage. The Oklahoma defense that time adjusted and had the tight end carry Jackson cover. If you look at Ron Calcagni, he's looking down there. He likes his wide open offense because as you said before, he utilized it in the CFL when he was up there as a coach. Now that's the end of the first quarter of play here in Norman and the Sooners were the first to get on the board as Heifel connected with Brandon Daniels. One is in the book, and Oklahoma leads by a touchdown. Now, one of the few OU OSU games that the cheerleaders don't have to wear the sweats and the big heavy jackets because the temperature is about 70 degrees here in Norman. Follow programming note, football news weeknights at 6 p.m. on Fox Sports Net. You can get all the football news, highlights, and analysis you can handle as we bring you in-depth pro, college, and even high school pigskin coverage. Check your local listings for football news weeknight, 6 p.m. right here on Fox Sports Net. Oklahoma State trailing 7-0 as we begin quarter number two. Second down and seven to go. They've already run 22 plays to Oklahoma's 10. But the Sooners have the number that's important. That is seven. Lindsay, the quick drop, throws it out in the flat, but it is well covered by the Sooners. Roy Williams again. He has had an excellent game, this young redshirt freshman out of California. Logan High School out of Union City. Big time player. Six foot, 215 pounds. 
looks very graceful in the open field. Once again, Oklahoma State trying to get the ball outside to Jamel Fobbs, but when you have athletes like number 38 running around, it's not going to be that easy. Well, they were so disappointed in last week's effort versus Texas Tech. They had some broken down coverages, allowed some big plays. And Mike Stoop said they had to come in and play a lot tougher today. Third down and 13, and this is a situation that OSU worked on a lot this week. Third and long. Three wide receivers to the right, two to the left. Lindsey's going to keep it. A design play up to the 35, and he is dropped. Knocked down to the 37-yard line by William Barty, and that'll be about three yards short of the first down. Once again, Lindsey already showing him that he can also beat you with his legs. That is so dangerous. And Oklahoma tried to spy him that time, but was unsuccessful because the spy gets caught up inside when the quarterback goes to the outside, which is exactly what happened. Pickup of 10 out of the play. There is Jarrell Jackson standing on his own 20-yard line. Boy, is he dangerous. Already has one touchdown to his credit. Broke on a 70 yards. The snap is low. But a line drive kick, and Jackson's going to watch that sail over his head into the end zone. A 63-yard kick, nothing on the return, and the Sooners with the lead will take over on their own 20 when we return. Eric Clemens back here down on Owen Field, almost getting kicked over here on the sidelines. Time for our national game summary after a quarter, and Josh Heupel is the man. He is 5 of 6 for 73 yards, hooking up with the former quarterback of DB, Brandon Daniels, three catches for 53. Jamal Fobbs, they've tried to use him, six carries and two catches. Not much in the total yard department, though, Ron Thulin. Absolutely right. But then you see again Josh Heupel audibleizing at the line, the time of possession, OU just over four minutes. Three times as much for the Cowboys. Sooners trying to establish some kind of running game, and there's not much doing on first and ten. In this spread out offense that Oklahoma employs, they come up to the line of scrimmage and make a decision. Can they run the ball inside or can they throw the ball? That time, Heifel decided he could run the ball inside. We take a look at Mike Leach, the offensive coordinator from Oklahoma. He gives his quarterback a tremendous amount of leeway. Hype was almost like a coach on the field. Of course, Mike Leach was the engineer of that Kentucky offense last year for Tim Couch. And I think Mike Leach is going to be a head coach one of these days, Artie. He's been rumored, of course, at Texas Tech. But he said, listen, I'm just concerned about Oklahoma right now. But there are probably a lot of schools that are very intrigued with Mike Leach, who's an excellent football coach. And they should be because this style of offense is what people like today. It puts people in the stands in a program that's down. I believe he will get it interviewed at Texas Tech. I hope he gets the job because I think he'll do an excellent job there. Now coming your way here on Fox Net, Golf Sun City Million Dollar Golf Challenge. You can see Sergio Garcia, Colin Montgomery, Ernie Els, and a slew of golf elite as they vie for $1 million. Coverage begins Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on Fox Sports Net. Of course, 99 British Open winner Paul Laurie, 99 Masters champion, Jose Maria Olafabel are also those who are expected to play. That will be coming your way from Sun City, South Africa. This is Sun City in Norman today. Temperatures in the 70s as Oklahoma leads 7-0. Early on here in quarter number two, the Oklahoma State defense, number 11 in the nation. They like to try to confuse you, and they gamble a great deal. It is a crap shoot for them. Again, the stack, Oklahoma on the right. Eiffel with time, intercepted, golden goalpost for Oklahoma State. Terrell Knowles with the interception and the touchdown. Josh Heupel had pressure in his face. And I think he threw the football without really seeing where he was throwing the ball. That's a huge play, though, for Oklahoma State's defense. But it's going to shake the confidence a little bit here of Josh Heupel and this Oklahoma offense, who the last four weeks, people have been really blitzing a great deal. Jim Sidness has not missed an extra point this year. The snap is down, and the kick right through the middle of the uprights. Talked about the excellent linebacking crew of Oklahoma State, and that was one of them. And we are tied in Norman. College football.
Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by the all-new 2000 Sabre by Buick. Re-engineered to be safer than ever. That's the statue of Buffalo Bill at the Cowboy Hall of Fame, just up I-35, about a 20-minute half-hour drive from Norman. And the Cowboys, thanks to their defense, get on the board, and the OSU faithful have something to cheer about high above Owen Field. 12.48 left to play in the half, and we are knotted up at 7. Rush Swetman set to kick it away. The Oklahoma State secondary is doing a good job of moving around, and trying to confuse Josh Heupel. Daniels and Jackson set to receive the kick. Daniels number three in the NCAA and returns. And this is Daniels. Running room. Look out. Side step one, crosses the 35, and that is where he is going to be knocked out of bounds by Rush Sweatman, the kicker. Daniels, who had the big kickoff return for a touchdown against Notre Dame, a big one this afternoon. And the kicker, Rush Sweatman, saved the day, but the Sooners with good field position at their own 35-yard line. And there is Brandon Daniels. Oklahoma offense, they average just about seven yards a pass and about 11 yards a catch. Again from the shotgun for Heupel. Pressure coming over the middle, wide open. Plenty of running room. Sidestepping Damian Mackey still on his feet, and he crosses into Oklahoma State territory down to the 36-yard line. Mackey, the redshirt freshman out of California, picking up 29 on the play. Watch Mackey from the right of your screen. He's going to try to get into this area. When you play man-to-man -man coverage, sometimes defenders get picked off. And that's exactly what happened, which allowed Mackey to come across the middle. Oklahoma wanted to utilize this style of passing attack a great deal today. The crossing route inside against man-to-man -man coverage. And they caught Oklahoma State. Now Heifel scrambling. And he is going to be yanked down, fumbling the ball. It rolls out of bounds at the 48-yard line. But the Sooners have possession. Robbie Gillum from the strong safety spot, the sophomore out of Louisville, Texas, just outside of Dallas on the stop. Rob Ryan, the defensive coordinator, installed a nickel defense that time and brought Gillum, who's the nickel guy, off the corner. We take a look at Rob. He's the son of Buddy Ryan, the architect of the 46 defense. And the one thing Rob Ryan preaches, and I love it, is attack, attack, and attack a little bit more. Because his personality is aggressive, and so is his defense. And he does an outstanding job of instructing these guys in the white helmets where to be and where to go. Loss of 14 on the play. The quick pass. Oklahoma State read it perfectly. Nothing doing, even a loss of a yard, and again, it was Gillum on the stop. You know, before we were talking about deception. Now, watch what happens here. Oklahoma State is going to show blitz. And what happens is these three guys are going to run here, here, and here. And Knowles right there comes over, knocks a receiver, and steps right in front of the pass. That's deception by call, but a great job by Terrell Knowles of seeing the ball. Rob Ryan played zone when he faked man-to-man -man on that, that particular play. On third and 25, Oklahoma, Josh Heupel's pass overthrown, intended for Damian Mackey. Mackey had a step on the defensive back. Heupel couldn't get it to him. So after the big completion, Oklahoma will be forced to kick it away. Hypo looks a little confused because of all the disguise and the different coverages being thrown at him. And Bobby Stoops knows something about that because Bobby Stoops made his reputation as a defensive wizard at Kansas State in Florida. Ferguson, first punt, 54, 55 yards, averaged just over 42 on the season. Oklahoma does an excellent job on punt coverage. This is a high kick. Fair catch is being called at the 15-yard line. And that is where Oklahoma State will take over. Now we have golf, we have football, and we have boxing. How about Sunday night fights? On Sunday, December 12th at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports Net, IBF middleweight champ Bernard Hopkins will defend his title 
the challenger and number one ranked contender, Antoine Equilus, who's 22-2-1. All his wins have come by the knockout. So join us for Sunday Night Fights, December 12th, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on Fox Sports Net. We've got a couple of heavyweights battling it out today here in Norman, just trading swings and trading punches. And right now, Oklahoma State with a football. The most balanced line we have seen for the Cowboys, and they keep it on the ground. No place to go. Now, this Oklahoma defense at times has really been able to shine, and at times they've looked like they're still trying to adapt to the system. They were a very good defensive team last year. This year, they've had to kind of learn what Mike Stoops and Brent Venables were trying to teach. And you're going to see Roy Williams, number 38, come off the corner on the left of your screen. That is a strong safety blitz against the two tight end formation. Good call by Mike Stoops and Bobby Stoops. Now, they're not a very deep defensive team. They basically have 11 players, and they go with them the whole game. The blitz comes from the right side, and Roy Williams drops Tony Lindsay for the loss. It, Second you know, sack of the game for the Sooners. It was the exact same blitz that time by Oklahoma. Oklahoma's trying to get more aggressive. Now, Tony Lindsay doesn't do a great job on the play fake, but quite honestly, he had no chance. When you're play faking and 38 comes off the backside of you, you never see him. Great job by Williams, but Lindsay had no chance. And you see Mike Stoops is fired up, and he wants a timeout there, and he gets it. I would say when you describe Mike Stoops, you should say intense. I'd say so. I think, I, think they, I think they heard him call timeout from up in the booth. We'll <laughs> take a timeout also with 9.58 to play in the half. When we return, we'll send it down to Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow on the field here in Norman. Just a reminder that Kellen Winslow and I will have scores and highlights from across the country coming up at the break on the Nissan Halftime Report. We'll also take a look at Joe Hamilton's day as Georgia Tech takes on Georgia. And Artie, got to ask you, does Hamilton still have a chance in the Heisman race? No, they've already engraved Ron Dane's name in the trophy. And I hate saying that because it makes me eat pie because I know Kellen Winslow hyped Ron Dane all year, but he deserves the trophy. Nathan Simmons on the right side, but it won't be enough for a first down, and the Cowboys will be forced to kick it away. 9.40 to play here in the second. Both teams making some mistakes. Both teams making some big plays. You know, and it looks like both teams started out being wide open, and both teams have gotten a little bit more conservative as this game has gone on. Elder's last kick was 60-plus yards. The left footer almost gets it blocked. Jackson looking up into the sun at the 40. Gets one block. Tripped up right at the 43-yard line. 41 yards on the kick, five on the return, and the Sooners will have it at about their own 45-yard line. That was very close to a block, and yesterday the Oklahoma coaches felt that they might be able to get one this afternoon. That was a great job of covering by uh, Jack Golden. But you're going to see right here, Oklahoma's coming off the corner, and... I'll tell you what happened on that, though. I really thought that Elders took his time. He read the laces, so to speak, and he read the name on the football. Hey, you got to be a little bit quicker with that. that. Almost got blocked that time, and it would have been the fault of the punter being a little bit slow. Sooners, two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Daniels now switches sides, goes in motion. They get it out to the flat. Jarrell Jackson looking for some running room. Not much doing. Jaquay Thomas from the defensive end. Spot a junior out of Houston, Texas, who really has picked up the slack on that defensive line for the Cowboys. Both Thomas and Kevin Williams on that defensive end spot for the Cowboys done an excellent job this year for Ryan's defense. And, you know, you look at Jackson here. He's a speed player. And a guy like Thomas can turn around and run him down. That's two excellent athletes competing at a high level. I think Thomas is an excellent, excellent pass rusher. Second down and eight. Again, Latrell switching positions with Reggie Skinner. They got to hurry. Try on the right side, looking for one block. They didn't get it. But still getting some running room with Skinner, the senior out of Claremore, Oklahoma, run out of bounds by the true freshman, Chris Massey, out of Spyro, Oklahoma. Massey, one of the most celebrated recruits ever to come to the Cowboys. In fact, it was a great recruiting class last year for Bob Simmons, but this was the gem. 
and he is a parade All-American. He was a high school quarterback that they listed in their press guide as just an athlete. They wanted to play him either running back or wide receiver or DB. He will be an All-American as a strong safety here at Oklahoma State. One yard for the first down. Skinner butts his head down, and I'm not sure he got it. Need to, needed to get to the 45-yard line. A lot of white... 201 pounds, didn't see a whole lot of daylight. One of the negatives of throwing the football so much, you lose your power game inside. I think Oklahoma can run outside well, but it's harder to run inside because your offensive linemen don't do it on a regular basis. Well, the officials are talking it over, making sure they got the right spot. There's Coach Simmons on the left, Ryan on the right. He's very proud of his defense. They're going to measure. It'll be interesting to see if they do not make it, what Bobby Stoops elects to do, either punt or go for it. They only need a couple of inches. Now you have that big right side with Stocker McDougal at right tackle at 6'6", 363, Bubba Burcham, 6'2", 271, and Matt O'Neill, the big center. Uh, it's, it's either going to be a quarterback sneak or, like yeah, you yeah. said, a handoff be behind number 78, that massive right tackle. See if it's a quick snap by Hyper. OSU, everybody on the line of scrimmage, trying to draw, draw them off sides. Changes the play. Cowboys dancing around. Banging in to the right side. That'll be good enough for the first down. And, and that's where you want to run. You want to run behind the op big offensive tackle. And Rob Ryan says, hey, I told you it was coming here. Come on, guys. We practiced that thing. You're going to see Courtney Malloy, number 92, get up inside, make a great job of penetrating up the line of scrimmage. But I'll tell you, it is hard to stop a back going forward for only one yard. LOU is trailing in plays 22 to 10. It's now 27 to 20. So they're starting to even things out. With 7.40 to play in the half. Heifel, pass complete up to the 35-yard line of Darrell Jackson. And that was the velocity we have seen on the passes of Josh Heifel. There was a lot of question whether or not he was getting a little sore this year. He proved it last week that he wasn't that sore. Had a great game against Tech and the numbers on Jackson. Well, Jackson that time ran a curl, and he showed what kind of great hands he has by coming back inside and making the sure catch. One of the things that's happening with Heifel, though, he's getting into rhythm, and he's getting used to the blitzing tempo of Oklahoma State's defense. Second down and just one. A dangerous, dangerous down if you're Oklahoma State on defense. Heifel can do so much. The blitz coming, flips it out to Daniels. Has the first down, and he is going to be run out of bounds, finally, by Adam Edwards. But it was good for the first. Little pick play that time out of trips, where Daniels is the inside receiver, runs to the outside. And I tell you, it's very, very hard when you're playing man to cover him. You're going to see him right here. He's going to go outside while these two guys come inside. Bing, bam, boom, hard to cover especially when you're in man-to-man -man coverage, the outside guy has got to come off. Chris Massey's got to come off and make that play, and he did not. Well, the Sooners impressive on this drive so far. Here comes Oklahoma State bringing about six. Pass is complete inside the 20-yard line to Chris Hammonds, the junior out of Sulphur, Oklahoma, from the tight end spot. You know, you look at Heupel, and we talk about his coaching on the field and his arm, but he's very subtle in his ability to avoid blitzers and sackers. And that was an example of it. This guy is not going to run a 4-5-40, but he can certainly avoid the sackers and the blitzers. You think of how many times he's thrown. He's only been sacked 12 times this year. Yeah, which is a credit to him and the offensive line. Well, Oklahoma State wants to talk about it defensively. They're going to call the timeout with 619 left in the half, and the Sooners inside the red zone. But the Oklahoma offense, we're seeing vintage OU, what they have done this year with this man, Josh Heupel. He can throw the 10, 12-yard pass. He can throw the little pick play. That's good for 12 yards. This is what Bob Stoops tried to instill. 
discipline on offense, and he's getting the benefits of it right now. And, you know, you look you look at them this year. They've played very well, as you said, but they've done it with the passing game, which is why they're 6-4, and four, and hopefully after today for them, they're 7-4. and four. They had a tough loss at Notre Dame, had a tough loss at Texas, and obviously lost again at Colorado. They are setting a bunch of records, though, on offense by throwing this football. And you look at some of the records that they have established this year, and the first one, I think, is indicative of it all. This year, they've had almost 300 completions where the old record, and you were probably here for that, yeah. Ron, was 158. So they have put a new dimension in Oklahoma football by throwing the football. Like well, Mike Leach has really helped that along, obviously, because in the glory days of Oklahoma, it was the wishbone of Galen Hall, the offensive coordinator, and Barry Switzer. But Chuck Fairbanks, of course, ran it also when he was here. But you know when you're successful, one or two guys on the staff have got to know exactly what they want, and so Leach does. On the eighth play of the drive, the Sooners keep it on the ground, and barely like fumble, the ball is loose. Everybody is diving for it. I think the Sooners may have gotten it back. Hammonds is sitting on it. Well, there was some pretty decent blocking, and then the ball got coughed up. And in the process, the Sooners may have picked up about four or five more yards. And a first down. Get it any way you can. You're going to see some excellent blocking up front by the Oklahoma offensive line. The ball comes flying out, and Hammonds, who's hustling downfield, finishing his block, number 81, falls on the football. When you hustle, you get rewarded. And that time, the big tight end, Chris Hammonds, was rewarded by falling on the football. Now Oklahoma State shuttling players in. First and goal from the nine. They show blitz. Heifel with time. Into the flat. Pass is complete to Daniels again. And he is inside the five. They're going to mark it at about the four-yard line. Timing patterns to the slot. Timing patterns to the tight end. Oklahoma is trying to take their inside receivers and run them away from the quarterback and hope that Oklahoma State defenders get confused or get picked in their man-to-man -man coverage. Now they wanted to hit the line quickly today, and they're doing just that. From the four, Latrell, right side, touchdown, Oklahoma! So once again, when they needed it, when it was the money play for them, they went behind their right side of the offensive line. And there's a familiar face at the University of Oklahoma. He's awful happy. And Larry Lacewell, just to your left, bottom part of the screen, also part of Barry's staff here in the glory days, honoring the 74 and 75 national championship teams this afternoon here in Norman. The extra point, they hook it around, and it is good. Seth Luttrell with his seventh rushing touchdown of the year, eighth overall, and the Sooners again have gone on top in the scoreboard department. Josh Heupel had an excellent drive. He was five of five on the drive for 34 yards, and the Sooners cap it off with Luttrell on their running touchdown. From the right side, Oklahoma State, nothing doing. Great coverage again on the kickoff by the Sooners. Ethan Howell had absolutely nowhere to run. And Michael Jackson, a wide receiver out of Idabel, Oklahoma, wrapped him up. Boy, was that a perfect kickoff coverage tackle. Sometimes guys get down there and they miss it. But Jackson sees it and he wraps him up. That is a big-time open field special teams tackle that time by Jackson, number 82. Well, the Cowboys averaging just about three yards of play. Their offense at times has looked like it's going to explode, but the Sooner defense has stepped up to the challenge the last couple of possessions. Lindsey going to be rushed, and he is going to be sacked again. The third sack of the game by the Sooners. Corey Callens and Roger Steffen combined to pick up sack number three. And every time it's come off the Oklahoma State left perimeter, and every time it's been on a play-action pass. And I'm telling you, when the quarterback runs a play-action pass, he does not feel or see the pressure to his back. And all three times, the sacks have come to his back. Stephan, the former walk-on, is solid, and he fits this system. 
straight ahead. Kevin Brown, nothing doing, and again, the Cowboys will be facing third and long. And you're seeing a change in philosophy here by the Stoops brothers with this defense from Oklahoma. They're blitzing a lot more. They're putting more pressure on this Oklahoma State offense. You see Mike Stoops once again. He looks like he's worried, but he's really having a good time. You know, he can't tell that by his face. He's really having a good time, especially when you sack the quarterback. Despite the fact they don't have that dominant pass rusher in the down lineman, they still felt they can do the pressure. And right. you can see what Oklahoma State has done on third down. They have 15 to go for the first, need to get up close to the 20. And here they come again. Lindsey, three-step drop pass. Incomplete at the 13-yard line intended for Ethan Howe, the senior out of Monroe, Louisiana. Looked like it hit him right in the pads. You think Mike Scoops doesn't live and die with this defense? He's moving, he's got great body language. Hey. Good job. That's a good call. But I like the fact that now here in the second quarter, he has adjusted what he's doing, and he's pressuring Oklahoma State a lot more. Now let's see if they put pressure on Elder. Fifth punt already of the afternoon. Standing on the end line. Pressure comes from the left side, but the left-footed kicker pushes Jarrell Jackson all the way back. And then he picks it up. Dangerous move, and he is dropped at the 36-yard line. Jackson looked like he was going to let it just bound around, and he decided to pick it up. Ron, that ball went about 70 yards in the air. That was one great kick by Elder. Officially 63 yards on the kick. Just a reminder, the Nissan Halftime Report coming your way right here from Owen Field is Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow with scores and highlights from the games today, including that Georgia-Georgia Tech game going on in Atlanta, the Bowl Championship Series breakdown, which that's why they can't decide who's going to go to what bowl yet, because we still don't decide what the BCS is going to do. There is Elder, who did a great job, a couple of 60-yarders today. Major League leg. Now the Sooners with just inside of four minutes to work with. That's an eternity for Heifel. The pressure, the pass, the complete, the first down. <laughs> Damian Mackey again with another reception, but Heifel right on the money. Watch what happens here now. You're going to see that trips formation again with three, three receivers to the outside. Mackey is the inside guy who's going to turn right here, come inside, and make the catch. And what we're doing, they're doing a great, he's the outside guy, they're doing a great job of giving Heifel enough time to throw that curl pattern. Pickup of 14 on the play. They are right at midfield. Three wide receivers to the right. Heifel, pressures. That play did not look good. Pass was intended for Andre Wolfork. Terrell Knowles is the one who is really putting pressure on Josh Heupel. When you run a lot of formations and the defense is blitzing a lot, like Oklahoma State, it's hard to pick up everything. It's like you said before, you're almost rolling the dice. And the quarterback's got to make some plays once in a while. And the Oklahoma coaches knew they were going to get a lot of pressure today. You just have to be patient with what you're doing. On second and ten, again from the shotgun and the left side of the OU line move. And we have to talk about the fact that they lost three starters on defense to the suspension earlier this week. That Coach Simmons has dismissed a couple of players, at least for this game. And that puts so much pressure on everybody else. Were you expecting, because of those suspensions, and all of them were secondary guys, that they would have to blitz more to compensate? Yeah, you know, I asked. Penalty. Repeat second down. I asked Rob Ryan that, and he said, "No, we're going to do what we do." And he says, "I'm aware of who's back there." And Mike Cassidy, the secondary coach, said the same thing. But he said, "We are going to do what we do, and that's blitz, and that's play a lot of man, and change it up with some zone, and that's exactly what they're doing today." They, they are very creative blitzers. Just about 60% of the time, they will bring more than four. Eichel now is second and 15. The pressure again by five. Heifel going for the big one, and it is incomplete. Intended for Brandon Daniels. That pass just started to float about halfway down. Heifel that time just put the ball up in the air and was hoping that Daniels had enough time to run underneath it. But as you said, a little bit too much air underneath that one. 
He does not have a cannon of, of, of an arm, no. but he's very, very accurate, and he's got what they call a nice touch when you watch him throw the football in pregame warm-up and in practice. Quentin Griffin in the backfield. The Sooners facing third and 15. So you're going to see Oklahoma State here. A bunch of guys around the line of scrimmage, and they come out and play zone. They bring three. They flip it out to Quentin Griffin. Bangs his way over the 40 five-yard line, and that's where they're going to knock him out of bounds. And that'll set up a fourth down and five. Pick up a 10 on the play. See, that's the chess match a little bit that time. Heupel thought it was going to be a blitz, so he called the play that was good against man coverage. Oklahoma State dropped out in the zone, and they were able to rally up and get the play. Well, Oklahoma is going to go for it. On fourth down and five, they'd be punting into a pretty stiff win that has just kicked up here in Norman. The Cowboys showing three on the rush. And it looks like the Cowboys are going to only rush three and play two, cover two behind it. Well, he was trying to obviously get them offside. They don't have a timeout to use. I think they're already out of timeouts. It's a delay of game call. Give the credit, though, to the deception that time of the Oklahoma State defense because they confused Josh Heupel. And he's seeing a bunch of looks today that I think he did not anticipate seeing. And sometimes quarterbacks try too much, but he's in a chess game with that guy right there, Rob Ryan. Now the Sooners will have to kick it away again. Richardson standing on his 10, didn't practice this week. He's been dinged up a little bit, but he is still dangerous. This is a high, short kick, fair catch is called for right at the 20. And that's where OSU will take over for a Dr. Pepper game break. We send it to Kevin Frazier. Guys, we check in on Vandy and Tennessee, second quarter, 10 zip balls. T. Martin, the quick pass to Leonard Scott. He's going, going, gone. A 33-yard touchdown play. No problem for the Volunteers. They win 38 to 10 and improve to 9 and 2 on the season. Now the question is, where do they fit in, and do they fit into the BCS mix, Artie? No, they do not. They should not be there with two losses, especially with a team like Kansas State, who's only got one loss. Tennessee should not go to the BCS games. Lindsey, this is where he's dangerous, running the option, but the OU defense up to the challenge, holding him to five yards before Roy Williams, who's having a nice football game so far this afternoon on the stop. You talk about that bowl implications. Oklahoma State's not sure. OU, they're rumored to go to the Alamo Bowl, but when A&M beat Texas yesterday, that threw a monkey wrench into everything. Now nobody knows where anybody's going. Well, that's all good because that means there's a lot of good football teams playing as we look at Williams again, who's had an outstanding game so far. And I know the people in California are very proud of him. Inside of two minutes. Second and four. The Cowboys are on schedule on this drive. Sooners rush four. Lindsey steps away. Down at the 29-yard line, short of the first down. And we talked about the BCS standings, and the computers didn't take Thanksgiving off, and this is where they stood coming into this week. Florida State, Virginia Tech, and Nebraska. And, of course, everybody was saying Nebraska didn't win by enough. Yeah, well, I, I don't know about anything, but I do know that Virginia Tech is undefeated, and they should play Florida State in the championship game. Because the one thing a computer never measures, and that's emotion. And Virginia Tech has won some big games this year, and so has Nebraska. But the two teams that are undefeated deserve to go. Bob's looking for the first down, and he gets it with a couple of spares. We head to the 61-second mark left in the first half. When was the last time you saw a computer at a football game? I haven't seen one. I, I still haven't figured <laughs> it out. Me either. I think uh, Frank Solich and Frank Beamer had the great lies that they're going to get their computer guys at their respective schools to explain everything to them. Yeah, I, that's exactly why I thought they were great yeah. lines, and both coaches have got it into perspective. Yeah, uh, computers and me don't get along. I know, I know I've gotten some email from you. Yeah. You can't I, spell either. $3,000 solitaire machine is what I got. <laughs> Cowboys trying to do something, waning minutes of the first half. Pass is complete up to the 40-yard line of Gabe Lindsay. Little brother who caught a touchdown pass, who had a great reception, I should say, last week against Baylor, comes up with that catch, his second of the afternoon. And Lindsay's trying to call a timeout, and they finally get it. And, you know, Oklahoma State that time looked a little disjointed because if you want to 
call a timeout, you do it right away. And it's hard sometimes to substitute in these two-minute drills. And that's what Bob Simmons is telling his young quarterback. Hey, you got to call the timeout right away and, you know, or give us some time to get some guys in, but we can't be doing both. Well, you have to talk about the, the maturing process of Tony Lindsay. A couple of years ago, of course, he was the Big 12 Offensive Freshman Newcomer of the Year. And, and real good, too. Very good, and the expectations were so high last year when he came in, and he did not have a good year last year, and a lot of people felt that it was because of Chris Halupka, who was a backup quarterback, that Bob Simmons alternated, and Halupka transfers, and Bob Simmons came in to us and told us in July already, he said, we're going to be a great offensive team if Tony Lindsay doesn't get hurt. And he Boom, got hurt. First game gets yeah, hurt. It's too bad. And on the other side of the field, it was the opposite because they end up going to get a junior college quarterback in Josh Heupel. As we look at the defense right there from Oklahoma, as they gather around their co-defensive coordinator, Brent Vanables. And Brent does a great, great job and a good young coach as he's talking to some of the defensive linemen. 28 seconds to work with for the Cowboys, trailing 14 to 7. OU led 7 0 after the first quarter. On a touchdown pass to Brandon Daniels. Both teams traded TDs here in the second. Empty backfield behind Lindsay, who moves into the shotgun. You see the three receivers up at the top look for a pass to go to the outside. The shooter's showing a blitz. They go inside, pass is complete. To Brian Blackwood, again, good use of the tight ends. Another first down for the Cowboys. And I said throw the ball to the outside so if you catch it, you can run out of bounds with the ball because what that didn't do is stop the clock. Blackwood, the former Juco All-American out of Northeastern Oklahoma. Final 20 seconds. Lindsay, another quick pass. Another completion. Another one to Blackwood. And they used a lot of time and didn't get really a whole lot because first downs at this point already really don't mean a whole lot. No, that's exactly right. You want to get down the field so you can kick a field goal, and Bob Simmons knows it. Ron, I've always felt as a coach it's one of the most difficult things to practice is the two-minute drill because of the adrenaline and the, the tension that goes along with it in a game that you don't get in practice, obviously. Well, the season for Bob Simmons, racked by injury. They opened up with a couple of wins, and they lost a tough one to Mississippi State. And Nebraska came back, looked excellent against Texas Tech. And they lost that three in a row to uh, Yeah, those State three guys, Texas. Yeah. that's a pretty good schedule right there, especially all three in a row. He was so proud of his ball club, though, to come back and win the last two against Kansas and Baylor. Granted, they are not the A&Ms and Texases of the conference, but Bob Simmons says our guys could have easily folded the tent, called it a season, but they didn't. And now they've put themselves in a position where they can go to a postseason game. You know, Bob is a guarded man. He's a cautious man, but he's a strong man. And I think he made a bold move and the right move in suspending those kids this past week. And I'll tell you, he never blinked. He said, that was the right thing for me to do, and I'm going to do it. Total offense, the Sooners with the advantage, but it isn't a whole lot. Not what they're used to. 11 seconds left. Lindsey being chased. Let's it fly, and it is going to be knocked down incomplete. William Barty got a hand on it. At halftime, Oklahoma State had better solve the pressure coming off the corner that time because that's about the fifth time it's happened today. As you see, Barty, who made a good play, but it was set up by the pressure from number 20, Rocky Kalmus, coming again off the defensive right side, the offensive left side of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. How tough is Kalmus? He has a broken bone he's playing with. It's a non-weight-bearing bone, but still, number 20 right there, he is one tough cookie. You know, I love him because yeah. he's an old-fashioned throwback guy. Final five seconds of the half. And here they come again off the corner. And Lindsay, this prayer up in the air, not going to be much except intercepted. Mike Woods picks it off. Still on his feet and has finally dropped his second interception of the year. And the Sooners will head to the locker room with a 14-7 lead over their cross-state rival, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. A lot of pressure in the second quarter by the Oklahoma defense. And most of it, like I said before, came off the defensive right side, either with outside linebackers or strong safeties. And Eric Clemens is with Bob Stoops now. Eric? 
All right, I'm with Coach Bob Stoops. Coach, a kind of defensive chess match, kind of the, the kind of football you're from. Your assessment to the first half. Uh, it's good, good half. Uh, we've just got to be uh, better protecting the football. We can't give people points, and we've got to be able to protect it. We've lost it a few other times. Uh, got to do that, keep them away from the big play on, on defense, and, and uh, just keep playing hard and making plays. What will be your primary message to your team at halftime? They, they really came on defensively later in the first half. Well, just to keep up the pressure on defense and come after them, and on offense, stay calm, be responsible with the ball, and, and wait to make a big play. We need to make a big play and uh, keep the ball moving, keep them away from big plays. Coach Toops, congratulations and good luck to you in the second half. We're at the half here at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma, 14-7. The Oklahoma Sooners lead it at the break. On the other side, Kevin and Kellen with a Nissan Halftime Report. Stay with us. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma. The score at the half in Bedlam 99. 14 to 7, Oklahoma leading Oklahoma State. Kevin Frazier and the cast and crew of the College Football Saturday Show here in o on Owen Field. And you just saw Barry Switzer as they honor the 1974-75 Oklahoma National Champions here at the half. As always, I'm joined by my partner, Kellen Winslow. And Kellen, they honor those guys. We see Barry Switzer, but boy, how times have changed. Most of the first quarter and first half. Oklahoma in negative rushing yards. Negative rushing yards at Oklahoma, we talked about in the opening. We're used to Oklahoma throwing that, running that football, but they came out throwing it now. Not a lot of success. The only success they really had in running the football early in this ball game was in the second half touchdown that they got, the second quarter touchdown they got. The fullback leading up in the hole, great blocking by the offensive line, and a short plunge with the shoulder to get him down in the field. I really look for Oklahoma to come out in the second half and test Oklahoma State defensive backs who are new. You don't assume somebody can cover. You got to throw it their direction, throw it deep, and find out if they truly can. Oklahoma has not done that yet. All right, let's get to the rest of the nation in Georgia Tech and Georgia playing in a game that is not only important because it's a rivalry and they're playing for bowl position, but also Joe Hamilton, maybe his last chance to garner a few Heisman votes. Hamilton has been fantastic today. Four touchdown passes. This one is all even. It's a dogfight, 48-48 in the fourth quarter. And uh, Kellen, I brought with there's 15 seconds left in the game and Kellen I I, I brought your um, Joe Hamilton for Heisman. Oh well, thank you, Kevin. I left Mouse it, pad. You left it at work. I left you tried it in Los, to leave Angeles, it in Los and Angeles, like and I wanted to make I'm sure you brought that with this. you. I tell you, Joe Hamilton's had a strong year statistically. He's led his team to victories. He's doing a great job for Georgia Tech. Let me tell you right now, voters love Heisman Trophy winners to be running backs. They always get a chance with running backs especially Ron Dane, who's the NC2A career rushing leader as of now. So Dane wins the Heisman. Point Dane line. wins the Heisman. Joe Hamilton have a great year. He'll be second or third, but Ron Dane will win the Heisman Trophy. I respect you for staying there all, all year long. All year long. He's been consistent. He's been on that all year long. Still plenty more coming from Owen Field. You're watching the Nissan Halftime Report. We're at the half in Bedlam 99, and it, it is Oklahoma 14, Oklahoma State 7. The Oklahoma Sooners at home this year have outscored their opponents 178 to 16. Oklahoma State almost with half of that in the first half, but they still trail with two quarters left to be played. 14 to 7 before the largest crowd this year to see a football game at Owen Field. Nearly 80,000 on hand. And they have seen a game where both teams have turned it over. Both teams have come up with big plays. Speaking of big plays, here's our coach, Artie Gigantino, diagramming one of them. Artie? One of the biggest plays in the game was performed by the Oklahoma State defense. And what happened on that play? Oklahoma came out in their triple set. And what Oklahoma State did? They showed blitz. But they came out and they played zone. This guy right here, Terrell Knowles, came over here. He hit this wide receiver coming inside. And then he sat down on the option route intercepted the pass, and ran it in for the touchdown. It was a great job, not only of disguising, but also by Knowles, of playing the football and playing cat and mouse. At halftime, our Eric Clemens had a chance to talk to Bob Simmons from Oklahoma State. All right, Artie, thank you very much. I just got through talking to Bob Simmons, the Oklahoma State head coach right now. He said, hey, we had some early success. 
with some passes and runs moving the ball against Oklahoma. We have to keep that up in the second half. He hated the turnover problems that they had. He also says they have to sustain long drives, keep that OU offense off the field, sustain long drives with no turnovers, he thinks is the key to the second half. Ron and Artie? Absolutely, Eric, because they told us yesterday, Bob did, that his best defense may be his offense, being consistent offensively. As we take a look at the numbers from the first 30 minutes of play, and you can see Oklahoma with 162 yards and averaging just over five yards of play. Oklahoma State about three yards of play. The one that jumps out at me, though, is the fact that Oklahoma has only rushed for three yards. In their losses this year, the four losses, they rushed for 30.5 yards per game. In the six games that they won, they rushed for 166 yards. Bob Stoops knows that this offense lives and dies by the pass, but they also have to establish some tempo with their running game. It'll be interesting to see how this goes in the second half. They show you lost double-digit leads in three of their four losses, and they receive the second-half kick. Up to the 20-yard line to the 25-yard line, and it's Brandon Daniels, and that is where Oklahoma will take over, leading 14-7. to I thought, I thought Kellen Winslow made a great point at halftime to see if Eiffel will come out and test this maligned secondary from Oklahoma State. Well, at the beginning of the year, Bob Simmons felt that the success on defense begins with the defensive line, but he also said it also is imperative that they improve in the secondary, and they were until the suspension of the three players. Now you'd think Hypo would try to take advantage of that, that Bob Simmons has only one senior starting back there, and you've got a redshirt freshman and a true freshman in your secondary. Hypo, whose father's a coach in Northern State, a Division II school in Aberdeen, South Carolina, used to go to his dad's practices. Came out of Snow College in Utah. Well, no. we have replacement players. Now how about replacement <laughs> chains? And then there's an injured chain. Eric Clemens is checking on the status <laughs> of that former chain, and he'll have an update for us hopefully here in the third quarter. I think Kellen and Kevin are taking it home with them. You know, it's their first road trip, that kind of thing. OU first and 10, their own 25-yard line to begin the second half. Quentin Driven and Seth Luttrell in the backfield with Heifel. OSU rushing four. They flip it out to the side, and it's tipped. Intended for Quentin Griffin, Kevin Williams, the redshirt freshman out of Fordyce, Arkansas, I got a piece of it. Well, you look at Williams now. He's six foot five. He's going to get his hands up, and he's going to get into the quarterback's face. He starts up the field, and the big old guy, Stocker's going to block him, but Williams sees Griffin slip out. He pulls out of his pass rush and tips the ball. That is excellent football sense by Kevin Williams, number 58. Covered a fumble for a touchdown versus Kansas this year was a linebacker. Heifel with two to snap it, just gets it off. They keep it on the ground to Griffin. He's banging his way up to the 27-yard line before Courtney Mallory brings him down. And Griffin is playing because Michael Thornton, who is starting at that, at that back position before he fractured his ankle, he is out for the season. And Griffin had to blow a redshirt year. They were hoping to redshirt him. He's small, but he's powerful, and he's fast. Sat out the first seven games, had to take the red shirt off him. They said, this young man is an exciting player. He's got good speed, good hands, and great lower body strength. The Sooners facing third down and eight. Piper, very calm, very cool in the pocket. OU yet to convert on third down. Oklahoma State brings a bunch of white jerseys, good protection. Heifel has a man, it's caught! Goodbye! Touchdown, Curtis Fagan! OSU gambled, and they got caught. Three yards for Curtis Fagan, a redshirt freshman out of Katy, Texas. His second touchdown reception of the year. The extra point by Duncan. And the Sooners use a minute and ten seconds to get on the board. Josh Heifel with his 30th touchdown pass of the year. 73-yard strike.
Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by National Car Rental. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go. And that's the state capital of Oklahoma here in Oklahoma City, just to the north of Norman, Oklahoma, where the Sooners have taken a 21-7 lead. As we are early on in the third quarter, Reggie White, Jamal Fobbs, and Marcus Jones. This man doesn't like the noise. <laughs> That's to return. The it is a little loud in this place. <laughs> Line drive kick. And it will sail out of bounds, and a penalty flag will be thrown. Let's get back to the touchdown once again. Good call by Hype. And what happens? It gets set up because in the first half, Daniels was catching passes here. But watch what happens with Fagan. He goes right down the field as Oklahoma State gets 11 guys on the line of scrimmage and blitzes them. Hypel has all the time in the world. He finds Fagan running right down the field. But the Oklahoma State defense overplay number eight, Brandon Daniels going into the flat. Perfectly thrown ball, but you know what else was perfect? Watch what these guys do up front in terms of picking up the blitz by Oklahoma State. It gives Heifel a ton of time. Well executed play. And a timely one at that. And the Cowboys get underway, and Lindsey is being rushed. His pass is complete to Kari Jackson. Inside the 40, down to the 35 yard line of the big tight end, rambling his way for a Cowboy first down and 29 yards. The same play that they started the opening series of the game off with, with Lindsey bootlegging out to his right and finding the big tight end. Now watch Lindsey. He's going to fake to the left. He's going to go out to the right. Jackson's a tight end. He blocks down. He comes back out. Great job of finding the football, getting it, excuse me, finding the tight end and getting the football to him. Officially, that goes down as a 30-yard pickup. And Lindsay will go from an empty backfield in the shotgun. Trying to answer OU's challenge. The ball is tipped, knocked away, almost caught by Nathan Simmons, or a check that it by Cameron White. It was tipped. White was there. Didn't get it. Eric Clemens, how's that chain doing down there? Well, Ron, the chain is undergoing a surgical procedure that involves <laughs> at least a couple of wire cutters. It's a serious procedure, but I think he'll be able to recover in time and get back in action before the end of this ball game. I thought chains were supposed to be strong. <laughs> of course, that Apparently chain. Apparently not this. Yeah, one. no way, man. The chain is a senior playing in its last game. Lindsey on the draw, leans forward, and Oklahoma is right there to cover him up. Nothing doing. Ryan Fisher, a junior out of Arlington, Texas, and Rocky Kalmus there to make the stop. Quarterback draw, as you said, out of an empty formation, but Kalmus coming off the corner, slowed down a little bit, and tied up Tony Lindsay. We know when Tony Lindsay gets loose, he can do tremendous damage running the football, but not so fast that time. You sense the momentum here, Ron, going towards the Sooners. That's Lindsay's ninth carry. And he has only four yards. That is containing Tony Lindsay. And it's an empty set again. And look for the pressure from the outside backers. Third down and nine. A quick look into the tight end. Kari Jackson is incomplete. And again, the Sooner defense up to the challenge. Oklahoma is, is audibling to a blitz every time Oklahoma State ends up in an empty formation. You're going to see Lindsey get the football, look for his target inside, but that is just one great play by number 28, William Bartke, and Mike Stoops loves it. And Oklahoma State will be forced to kick it away after the big completion to the tight end. This is like what happened in the first half. Jackson standing on his 10. A little pooch kick away from Jackson, looking for the corner. Does not get it. It was close. Pretty good coverage by the Cowboys of OSU. Willie Young, number 20, a wide receiver out of Kansas City, was down there to try to get Elder's butt. Couldn't get to it. And OU will have it on their own 20.
name's Anthony Sullivan, and you've probably got a broom like this at home. When you sweep, dirt and dust flies everywhere. If you want a clean sweep, then check out the One Sweep. The secret's the rubber bristles. When pressed down, they form a squeegee action. People love the One Sweep for wood floors. In one pass, it gets it all. And it doesn't scratch the floor. The tile, it's the best. It gets in the grout that traps the dirt. Use the One Sweep wet, and the brushing action scrubs so you don't have to. When you're done, just flip it over and squeegee the floor dry. But here's the best part, carpet. The one sweep goes deeper than even the most expensive vacuum cleaner. Cat hair, dog hair, your hair, my hair, the secret is short strokes. The one sweep creates static, and that's why it works. The purple one sweep normally sells for $29.99, but order today and you'll receive it for just $19.99. But order in the next five minutes and you'll receive a second one sweep absolutely free. To order your set of two one sweeps for only $19.99 plus shipping, call 1-800-886-2266. Crasher Stars, Sunday at 5.30 on Fox Sports Net. Oklahoma State's defense usually gives up about 174 yards throwing the, uh, on the passing the ball, and right now they've given up over 230 to the Sooners, and that is why OU leads 21-7. And coming into the game, they were ranked ninth in the country in yardage allowed by the forward pass, and as you said before, 11th in total defense. So they played well all year. The sun is hit behind the clouds as Oklahoma keeps it on the ground with Griffin. The true freshman staying out of seat was up for player of the year honors in Houston, Texas last week. And Eric Clemens, this is Bedlam, and you're right in the middle of it. Yeah, I sure am. And these guys were pretty quiet when it was 14-7, and Oklahoma State had returned the interception for a touchdown, making some noise now up by 14, and they sent a nice bowl game. Of course, we won't figure out that picture until a little bit later, guys. And this cutie here is in our Oklahoma cheerleading outfit as well, waving hello to everybody like these guys are, guys. <laughs> that bowl picture is not going to clear up till the Big 12 championship game in San Antonio a week from today. Again, it is Griffin. OU just taking their advantage of the clock. Kevin Williams on the stop. You know, Ron, we were talking about being able to complement this passing game with the running game, and Oklahoma's got a run game coordinator, Mark Mangino, who does a great job coaching the offensive line. And there you look at big old Mark, and he came from Kansas State. He's a fun guy, but he's come in here and he's gotten the respect of all these players, and especially a guy like 78 Stocker McDougal, who is going to be a first-round draft choice this year. A lot of the credit should go to Mark Mangino for developing this offensive line. The pride of Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Yeah, you and him got a lot of Pennsylvania stories you. when you guys get together. The word Yuns was used about 20 times yesterday. Griffin, straight ahead. Trying to find some kind of running room, and Dwayne Levels, the sophomore out of Richardson, Texas, who backs up everybody at the linebacker spot. Stocker McDougal, he is big at 6'6", 363 pounds. And watch what happens here. He just comes off the football, and wow, does he stand up old Kevin Williams there. He's got good feet. Like I said before, the pro scouts like him. He will be a first or second round draft choice. A lot of people fear him when they line up across from him. He was not emotionally stable, shall we say, as we look at the scouting report on him when this new staff took over. He was much maligned last year. Pass by Heifel is knocked down, but Mark Mangino said what he did is he didn't do anything. Said, I didn't look at any tapes of the big fella because I didn't want any kind of preconceived ideas. You know, he runs a 4-9, 40-yard dash, which everybody loves. He's got great backwards foot speed. That means he can set up quickly, pass protection, and he's a crunching run blocker. In other words, he stuffs the defender into the ground. That's called a crunch. And when he puts his feet on forward, it's even better. <laughs> you better believe Not it. Not bad. Terrence Richardson at his 20-yard line as the Sooners set to kick it away again. Jeff Ferguson standing on his 24. Kicking into a very slight breeze that has died down considerably. Richardson, no fair catch. From the 17 up to the 22. 46 on the kick, 6 on the return, and we'll keep it right here. One, one of the keys to this game was the punt team of Oklahoma covering that punt return team from Oklahoma State. And that was a good example of them hustling down the field. Well, just a reminder, football news, weeknights at 6 p.m. on Fox Sports Net. Get all the football news, highlights, and analysis you can handle as we bring you in-depth coverage of pro, college, and even high school football. Check your local listings for football news, weeknights at 6, right here on Fox Sports Net.
So Oklahoma State, first and 10, their own 23-yard line, trailing by a couple of touchdowns. OU striking quickly here in the third. Lindsey from the shotgun hit immediately as he gets rid of it, but the pass is complete to Jackson. But what a hit did Tony Lindsey take. Once again, they're coming off, the Oklahoma Sooners are, off their defensive right side, the offensive left. And look to the left of your screen right here. Torrance Marshall just pounds them. Well, I'll tell you, they've got to make an adjustment on that because that's about the seventh time today Oklahoma's either hit Lindsey or sacked him. Great job by number 10, Torrance Marshall. Lindsey playing with a leg brace on, so he wants to get rid of it. Doesn't feel that mobile with it as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to need Nathan Simmons. He's going to need another brace, though, if they don't yeah. start picking that up because those are just clean shots to him. And that's where quarterbacks get hurt with all this blitzing in football today is blind side hits like we just saw there. You can There's see the brace. It's yeah. a big cumbersome brace. Well, look at see, he's thing. got a little limp when he when he tries to put a whole lot of weight on that left leg. <laughs> see, he got some grass stains on it, Ron. <laughs> My goodness, he spent a lot of time on the turf. But it's a first down for the Cowboys at the 34-yard line. Lindsey will run the option. The pitch is good up to the 36-yard line of Jamal Fobbs. He's ushered out of bounds. Well, you know, a lot of it isn't uh, just Tony Lindsay, but the offensive line, and of course, some of them are coverage sacks, but you can see 41 sacks allowed this season, only 24 last year. And once again, the offensive line has had to move some people around. Yeah, and it's the running backs also picking up the right people. And when Tony Lindsay went out, B.J. Tiger got sacked quite a bit because he wasn't used to, like you said, and I said, he said it perfectly, getting rid of the ball quickly. Second and nine, Lindsey's going to be dumped again. He had absolutely no prayer as the first hit was leveled by Roger Steffens. Jeremy Wilson guessed also went on the Outside play. Outside pressure. Watch 51 come right there, and Lindsey is going to run right into the blitz. You couldn't call it better. It's a bootleg to the right, and boom, Stefan disrupts him, and it ends up being a stack. Earlier in the game, I talked about Lindsey's ability to run to his right and throw the ball. Well, that's what they're doing today. They're stopping him, not only from the backside, but the front side. Wonderful job by Roger Stefan of coming across the line of scrimmage. Loss of seven on the play. Third and long, third and 17. Lindsey lost it up. Looking for Hal, and it's going to be overthrown. Ethan Hal, the intended receiver, who has been very quiet this afternoon. Covered by William Barty. And the Sooner faithful of over 75,000, giving him a good round of applause. You know, how close, but yet so far away. Just a little bit. You talk about a game of inches. That would have been a huge, huge play for Oklahoma State. How close, but yet so far away. And that's exactly what's going through Bob Simmons' mind there. And again, the Cowboys will be forced to kick it away. Their seventh punt of the afternoon. This guy's got a major league leg. Yeah. He can really boom the football. He's had a couple of 60-yarders. This one again, they're trying to kick it away from Jackson, but he'll field it at the 16. Gets away from the first wave. Not much on the second, up to the 23-yard line. 55 again on the kick for Elder. Six on the return, and with 8.18 left in the third quarter, Oklahoma State needs something to cheer about. They trail by 14. The last bedlam of the millennium, and right now the Sooners lead it 21-7 with 8.18 left to play here in the third quarter, along with Eric Clemens and Artie Gigantino and our college football Saturdays studio show. Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow on hand. We're glad you're with us. Our final telecast of 1999. You see the two backs in the backfield. That's not only to help run the football, but it's for blitz protection. From the shotgun, Heifel going deep again. Has a man again. And the pass is complete again. No, it is dropped. Jarrell Jackson had it in his hand, and Shepard was there to knock it away. You know, going into this game, Shepard had not given up a completion in three games. The ball is a little bit underthrown, but you got to love Jacoby Shepard keeping fighting for the football, going up and knocking the ball loose. I love secondary play like that. He's six foot three, which really helps him. 
I think that pass should have been caught. Jackson had it. Ah, it's a good defensive play. Come on. He's not like oh, an offensive no, no, coach. No. Should have been caught. Heupel, play action, a little shuttle pass. Running room for Daniels. Over the 35, up to the 37-yard line, and that'll be good for a Sooner first down. Pick up a 14 on the play. We saw that little shuttle pass against Texas A&M a couple of weeks ago. It was successful as we look at the comparison between the two QBs. And the big difference here is obviously the yardage that Heupel has gotten as opposed to what Lindsey has gotten, 116 to 246. I think Heupel has had a lot more time, don't you think? Yes, he has. Absolutely. And Lindsey's on the corner most of the yeah. time when he's throwing as opposed to being a drop-back type. From the 37, Heupel keeps throwing. No gain out of the play. A little quick look in to Antoine Savage, the true freshman out of Albany, Georgia. Already set an all-time freshman receiving mark, courtesy of this man who's set just about every mark in OU history, even some for career records. And that's impressive, considering this is his first season. There's Brandon Daniels, quarterback of the team last year. Been a little bit of everything on this yes, football team. Has. Quarterback. Defensive back, wide receiver. Because he never wants to play quarterback again. Won't have to. Heifel, great protection. Going deep. Has a man. The pass is complete to Daniels. Penalty flag is also thrown right at the spot of the reception. Daniels down to the 36-yard line. And it's offensive pass interference, so forget about it. You know, it might have been a pick that time. Pickup of 31 on the play is negated by the penalty. It looked like Daniels may have gotten a little stub on the play. You're going to see Daniels. He's on the inside. He comes and runs a wheel route. The ball is thrown up in the air. His right arm right here pushes off the defender. That's an excellent call that time by the officials. Robbie Gillum, number 41, is going up for the ball, and he got a little bit of a push that time. Daniels is right on. And the Sooners with eight penalties for 74 yards. And Bobby Stoops, an old defensive backfield coach, yep. does not like it. A lot more penalties for a lot more yardage than what that man is used to. Second down and 24 now for the Sooners. OSU only brings three. Heifel swings it out in the flat. Penalty flag is thrown. Griffin looking for some running room. He is slammed out of bounds by Adam Edwards. And you saw the chess match there again. Three men rushing, a fake like it's a blitz, and Oklahoma State falling back and playing a zone defense. Yep. This is going to be holding now against Oklahoma, and it'll be interesting to see if Coach Simmons and Rob Ryan decline this penalty. It'll push him back even more. He's going to say he doesn't want it. And it he is does decline. decline. Well, you want the ball here. It's going to be third and a ton of yards, third and over 20. So it's a good call and a good decision to decline it. Holding on the offense. Penalties declined. Third down. I wish I was a Boy Scout. I know. <laughs> Everybody's happy here, Norman. Now. Happy, happy. Yeah, yeah. Were you a Boy Scout? Were you a Boy Scout, Ron? I want to be. <laughs> I quit after a week. Uh, well, now they're talking it over again. These officials have had a long day. They're staying at our hotel. They were up and meeting at 8 o'clock this morning. They said they come over to the stadium about three and a half hours before the game, and they talk about game situations. They're being graded on every play by a person from the Big 12 office right now. So they've done a good job this year. This is a good crew we've had. Yeah. You look at the three-man rush again. You look at the nickel linebackers and the nickel and dime players walking around trying to confuse Heifel. Three-man rush. Heifel steps up in the pocket, and he is going to be dropped back at the 24-yard line by Zach Warner, the junior out of Oklahoma City. Strained at NCL versus Texas A&M, and he's been hampered a little bit, but he didn't show it on that play. That is only, that's the third sack allowed today. Ron, he's got great presence here. He sees it's going to be a covered sack. He's holding on to the football as he drops back. He does not want to throw an interception here. Excellent feel, excellent presence. But Warner and that defensive line should give all the credit to the secondary. That is a covered sack, but excellent presence that time by the quarterback, Josh Heupel. 
So three sacks today, 25% of their total for the season that OU's given up. OU taking their time. Line drive kick, returnable for Richardson from the 42-yard line. Steps up and again, excellent coverage by the Sooners. Richardson has not been able to get on track. Kick of 35, we have a penalty flag thrown. Return of seven. And you can tell that he's been hampered by an injury, Ron. He just Absolutely. isn't the same self in terms of catching the football and getting that thing up the field. Doesn't have that explosion. Well, it looks like they picked up the flag now. No penalty. They have picked up the flag. Well, just a reminder, it's the NFL this morning, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on Fox Sports Net. The crew of Myers, Slater, Spielman, and Levy preview the day's NFL action, followed by Fox NFL Sunday on your local Fox affiliate. You know, Ron, that sounds like a law firm instead <laughs> of a, a TV show. Could be. It could be. I know one guy is extremely intelligent. That's Jackie Slater. He was at the Rams when I was there, and he's a great, great offensive lineman and a great person. Yeah, the Cowboys keeping it on the ground. Now this guy, something going offensively. Excuse me, Ron. Number 10, Torrance Marshall, is a real physical specimen. He reminds a lot of people around here of a guy by the name of Brian Boswell. Well, they keep it on the ground again. Simmons looking for some running room. Nathan Simmons, what a great story. The coach's son graduated in three years, has his degree in psychology, taking graduate courses. But the bottom line is this has been a very frustrating season for this young man. The numbers on him, 5'10", 195 pounds. And he said it's been just a real blessing to be able to be on the sidelines and play on the same team as that man, his dad. Well, I would think he would have come here with his dad yeah. instead of going to the University of Colorado. A built-in recruiting advantage, as they say. Simmons in motion on first and ten. The fullback, Kevin Brown, nothing doing. It's offsides against Oklahoma. The left defensive end on the top left-hand side looks like he jumped. He was handed by Torrance Marshall. And Ryan Fisher. Officials have been busy today. It's our 13th penalty, and it'll go against the Sooners and the Cowboys marching. Plenty of time left in this football game with 4.45 left to play in the third. Offside, on a defense, lined up in a neutral zone, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Well, Bobby Stoops. <laughs> Gives him a piece of his mind. He does not like penalties like all coaches do yeah. because they know they can cripple you. You can't get complacent when you have this big of a lead. They keep it on the ground, trying the left side, wrapped up immediately. Heineke take care of Nathan Simmons. You know, what's happening now to Oklahoma a little bit, they're starting to jump around, and that last play, they looked a little bit confused. It was lucky for them that Oklahoma State ran the ball right at them. Look at all these guys right in there. What are you guys doing? Hey, move over. This is my gap. But Oklahoma State accommodates them, Ron, by running the ball right into the confusion. I think he made a whale of a play there. He was being blocked and still got his hands on center. That's off to him. Sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma. On second and six, Lindsey Keats looking for a man, has a man. Incomplete, William Barty was right there. When Tony Lindsey watches that on video, he's going to say, I should have thrown yeah. the ball deeper and gotten a little bit more zip on the football. It's the bootleg to the defensive left. You see, well, get the ball out of the field. He looks. And he looks, and Cameron White is wide open, number 12. He's the deep, what we call the deep crosser. Look at Cameron White right there. He was wide open. That could have been a touchdown if Tony Lindsay had seen him. Third down and six for the Cowboys. Two wide receivers to the right. Offset eye. Lindsay seeing the pressure, swings it out to Simmons. Stopped immediately at the 42-yard line. No gain on the play. Roy Williams coming up from the strong safety spot. Rocky Kalman also there to make the play. You know, for a guy that wasn't supposed to play today, Rocky Kalman has had himself one great yeah. game. He's all over the place. So we have a penalty on the play. And I think it's a substitution problem again. Sideline no warning. Sideline warning. On Oklahoma. 
you know, Rocky Calvis, we were talking to the Oklahoma State coaches on Wednesday, and one of the first things they all said is, boy, we are so glad Rocky Calvis is not playing. And then he shows up and plays. Yeah. Not so fast That's on that, right. because when they say there's a game time decision, like Bob Stoops told us, on Rocky Calvis, he usually ends up playing. Scott Elder, so far the MVP of this game for the Cowboys. Jackson standing at his 10. Elder, a little pooch. Trying to get it inside the end zone, and it makes it there, and they couldn't knock it down. You know, Ron, on those pooch kicks, you got to try to get the ball in the air a little bit more so your coverage guys like Young have a chance to run down the field and field the ball. If you kick a line drive like that, the ball is just going to bounce into the end zone, and that's happened twice. Well, Sunday Night Fights will be returning to Fox Net on December the 12th at 7 p.m. Eastern. IBF middleweight champ Bernard Hopkins defends his title against the number one ranked contender, Antoine Equilas, who has 22 KOs in his 22 fights. That's coming your way in December here on Fox Sports Net. Oh, you straight ahead, nothing doing. And Eric, we understand we have a final update on our chain. Final update, the original chain after being out for about uh, 10, 20 minutes undergoing a surgical procedure is back in action. The chain gang is here and they say, hey, we got the original back. So after successful surgery, it's back in action again and nobody moved on that no game play. <laughs> Guys, you got, you got to play with pain though, Eric. <laughs> you know, absolutely. Shouldn't be in the Big 12 if you can't stand it. Go get on the play. Second and 10, Heifel directing traffic. Andre Wolfolk moves in. The Cowboys bring five. Heifel pass up to the 25, complete, and drops immediately is Damian Mackey. Pick up of five on the play. You know, we were talking about Stocker and McDougal. Now watch the big fella here, number 78. He's going to set up. He's going to retreat. He's going to get his rear end down. He's going to get his hands out. That is excellent pass protection. He keeps his feet moving, but you know what he does? He pushes the defender, Warner, past the quarterback. That's what the pro scouts like about this big man, his ability to move his feet. Wolfolk in motion. Third down and four. Heifel can run for it if he hurries. Gets it off. The pass is caught and then dropped. Seth Luttrell had it, but was hit immediately by Robbie Gillum. You know, the funny thing, Ron, about football, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And this time, old McDougal's going to set up, but Warner says, oh, boy, I'm just going to bull him over. Now, I think, in all fairness to McDougal, he went down and tried to cut him at the last minute, but it didn't look good. Now the Sooners facing fourth and four. Oklahoma State shuttling some players in, and oh, you set the kick it away again. Things have settled down since the first minute and ten here of the third when Oklahoma scored to make it a 21-7 ball game. The rush was there, and this is a booming kick. Richardson all the way back to his 13-yard line. Doesn't make it up to the 20. He's run out of bounds at the 16. A 58-yard kick. Zero on the return. Fantastic coverage again. And coming into the game, Oklahoma was number nine in the country in net punt. Tremendous, tremendous job. Now, you know, we talk about form all the time with quarterbacks and place kickers, but Jeff Ferguson has got excellent form in punting the football. He waits, the ball is snapped perfectly, he gets the ball, he takes one, two, three, and he hits the ball, perfect form. But watch, look at that leg, look at that extension with that leg coming up there. That is just tremendous form by the Ferguson, excuse me, by the punter, Jeff Ferguson. On first and 10. OSU, Jamal Fobbs, the junior out of New Orleans, Louisiana, whose father is a coach at Baylor and is in attendance today. Nothing doing. Alone Richardson or Rocky Kelman's there to make the stop. Now watch what happens here with, with Fobbs. He gets outside, and he's looking outside, but you know what, Ron? If he had to do this over again, I would have cut that baby back inside because there's too many red shirts out here. He doesn't see it. That's why we always talk about vision as being a running back's best friend. If he had a little bit better vision inside, he might have gotten positive yardage. 
He lost the yard officially out of his leg. Second and 11 for Bob Simmons and company. Lindsey pressured again. Look out. Throws it complete over the middle to the 25. Ethan Howe run out of bounds at the 46-yard line by Mike Woods. What a great job by that man just getting away from the pressure. Howell, a track guy, transfer from Grambling, did a good job of getting open to allow Lindsey to get him the ball. Pick up a 31 on the play. His dad, Dallas, played in the National Football League, and his twin brother is one of those players that were suspended for this game. Well, one pass in all 11 games this season. And it was iffy for a while. He's been quiet today. First and 10 from the 47 for the Cowboys. Down by two touchdowns. Brown the fullback. Nothing doing. You know, Oklahoma State is going to have to open it up a little bit here because they're down by 14 points and hope that they can make some big plays. And we are inside the final 30 seconds here of quarter number three. OSU not in any big hurry to get this play off. They have to get it off about five seconds before the game clock goes to zero. Plenty of time to snap it as Jamal Fonz goes in motion. The rush again. Lindsey keeps it. Lindsey crumbles. Ball is loose. Oklahoma State recovers. Roy Williams lowered the boom on Lindsey, but a great job recovering that loose ball by the Cowboys. You know, you talk about fumbles and you talk about forced fumbles. That was a forced fumble that time by Roy Williams. Adam Davis puts the big body all 6'4", 275 on it. Recovers the loose ball. And that's the way the third quarter will come to an end with Oklahoma leading the Cowboys of Oklahoma State 21-7. Well, they let our producer Mike Helling out of the truck to attempt a field goal worth $1,000. And this was yeoman's effort by Mike. Watch the form. You know what? That is ugly. Hammy. And then the hands go up. And he got a thousand dollars. Is that what that is? Got a thousand bucks. Yeah. yeah. yeah Congratulations. Him. Won't be able to walk tomorrow, but he's got a thousand dollars. By golly, that's the good news. And the good news for the Oklahoma Sooners is seventy-five thousand plus on hand for the Bedlam series, the ninety-fourth meeting, and OU leads by fourteen heading into the final quarter. Now with Eric Clemens and Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thu, and we're glad you spent your Saturday with us. Look at this formation over here, Ron. Four guys at the bottom of the screen. Lindsey scrambling, intercepted by the Sooners. Corey Heineke, the sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma, his first interception of the year. The former walk-on comes up with a pick. Look at this formation. There's four guys over here, but Weineke's right here. He's going to step forward and then come back out and intercept it. That's called a zone blitz. The defensive end comes out. He's helping cover in the middle, and that is a thrill of a lifetime for a defensive end. Great job, and Lindsey never, ever saw him. I think you're right, Artie. I don't think you ever saw him coming no, up there. No chance. X walk on had some back problems early, early in the year, but his back feels great right now. And the Sooners keep it on the ground. Reggie Skinner dancing around, going absolutely nowhere, but he got there quickly. And, you know, you talk about a guy like Corey Heineke. He, he's a guy that only weighs like 220 pounds. And that yep. just shows you the type of determination that young man has. Well, he went to Northeastern A&M, started out there his career, was a blocking fullback and a deep snapper, came to OU, thought I was going to play fullback there. They had Seth Luttrell, wasn't fast enough, so he said, I'm going to play some defense. Done quite well. And the number's on Hyper. Five for seven on the long passes. A little short looking pass is complete. Antoine Savage, the true freshman out of Georgia. Inside the 25, down to the 24. That's your uh, Artie Gigantino run after catch. And Oklahoma does it so well, which is why their completion percentage is so high. Heifel's going to get the ball. He's going to take it. He's going to throw it outside. 
and bingo, it's an easy catch. Savage gets up the field. Now, he coming into the game today, he averaged 14.2 yards per reception, and a lot of those 14.2 yards were after the catch. His first catch today, it was good for 14. Yep, he's on his average. Second catch today, yeah. They take the reverse straight ahead. Skinner in the red zone down to about the 18-yard line. And Eric Clemens is enjoying this atmosphere. He's right in the middle again, Eric. Uh, yeah, Ron, with a lot prettier company this time. Yeah, that's it. Uh, these fans really happy, especially with that interception. And I know they all plan to storm this field because they'll be celebrating some kind of bowl if Oklahoma holds on to this game. Uh, I'm going to stay here for a while, guys. Yeah, that's our ladies, man. <laughs> Let's hope they don't get cable in Connecticut. 13-17 to play. The Sooners, Skinner, dancing in the middle, finding something, getting up to the 15-yard line. Robbie Gillum on the stop. A little deception again. You're giving the ball off inside to Skinner, but you're faking it to Daniels coming around. Skinner's running up inside behind number 78, Stocker McDougal. And what Bobby Stoops is telling Mike Leach there and big old Mark Mangino, hey, let's slow this clock down. There's only 12 minutes and 50 seconds left, and we got a chance to get out of here. Did you see Bobby Stoops, who is very much a hands-on head coach in offense and defense? They only need one for the first. They've only converted one out of eight today. And again, Heifel changing the play at the line. They're going to throw it. Heifel pass incomplete. Intended for Brandon, Brandon Daniels. You know, and Kenyatta Wright did a great job of getting in the way, getting in the vision of Heifel. You're going to see Heifel. Now, this is great, great job by our camera guys. Look, everybody's talking. The center's talking. Number 14's talking. They're giving hand signals. He knows what he's going to do. It's maximum protection. The back stays in. But number seven, Kenyatta Wright, gets in the throwing lane, and that's why Brandon Daniels does not have a touchdown. This is an outstanding linebacker, number seven, Kenyatta Wright. And OU will attempt the field goal. The ball is down. The kick splits the upright. And Tim Duncan with his 11th field goal of the year. We have a timeout. The Sooners have opened up a 24-7 advantage here in the fourth. Just over 12 minutes to play in the ball game. The Sooners have opened up the 24-7 lead. And already one of the things we thought Oklahoma State would do would do more trick plays. They yeah. haven't done them. And, you know, you got to give a lot of credit today to that Oklahoma defense. They've held Oklahoma State to 176 total yards, and they are doing a great, great job. We talked to Bobby Stoops and we talked to Mike Stoops about preventing the big plays, and so far so good for Oklahoma's defense because they have prevented the big plays from the Oklahoma State offense. Well, Duncan, who hit his first nine field goals of the year, missed his next five, got the 31-yarder, and has given the Sooners the lead. Oklahoma State bobs up to the 20-yard line, and that's where they will, they will begin with 12-10 showing on the clock, and the Cowboys need to do something quickly. You're probably going to see the Cowboys open it up even more, Ron, Mm -hmm. Maybe go to more of the wide open offense with three and four wide receivers and an empty backfield. Because you're gonna, you want to spread out Oklahoma now and get a quick strike here. Now the Sooners have had the ball five less minutes than the Cowboys and they have 100 more yards offensively. That doesn't make any difference. What makes the difference is up in your left-hand corner, 24 to 7. I've always thought that was the most misleading stat yep. in all of football. Simmons and Halfordy in the backfield. Simmons, or Jamal Fives, I should say, nothing doing. And here's Eric Clemens with our National Car Rental Game Summary. Eric? Okay, guys, storyline pretty much the same for the OU offense is Josh Heupel approaching that 300-yard mark again. A couple of TD passes. Brandon Daniels, Mr. Everything, six catches, 82 yards, and two kick returns. Jamal Fives, in the meantime, they're trying to get him on track. Nine carries, just 26 yards, two catches for minus six. So OSU in a bit of trouble right now. And Lindsey has been contained. Play action with a man in his face. Lindsey's pass is almost picked off again. Barty is right there. 
He has been Johnny on the spot a couple of times this afternoon. You know, he's a pro prospect. He runs a 4-4. He benches 330 pounds. He's an ex-strong safety that's got a great feel for the football when the ball is in the air. Now, someone might think this is interference or close to interference, but I don't think so. He was going for the football. But again, I'm prejudiced towards those defensive guys because to me, there is no such thing as pass interference. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll buy that. Third down and 15 now for the Cowboys. All on the 15-yard line. They just know they did not get that playoff. They did not. Pass is incomplete, but the penalty flag was thrown. As you saw our play clock in the bottom left-hand portion of your screen, red zero. And Bob Simmons' team will now face third down and 20. The red game, on the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. Well, an update on OSU's offensive line. Raynell Levine is now out of the ball game. Josh Lend has moved over from that right tackle spot, and he has played just about every position. The numbers on Lindsey. And what the numbers don't reflect, though, is the harassment he's been underneath uh -huh. and how many times he's not only been pressured, but knocked down to the ground. And they take their toll on any quarterback. It is loud at Owen Field. Interesting play call, third down and 20, and you're down by 17. You know, Ron, I really believe Bobson just made the decision we don't want to make a big mistake down there. Mm. As we take a look at Ron Calcagni, he knows, hey, the quarterback goes back to pass. It could end up being an interception for a touchdown or a fumble. That was a conservative play just to try to get some field position here with 10 minutes and 44 seconds left in this game. It was also Garrett Stegs at tight end carrying the football, and their bowl opportunity is at stake. Elder again to kick it away for the ninth time. Jackson at his 37. Jackson from the 47. Splits the seam, stays on his feet in Oklahoma State territory. Let's send it down to Kevin Frazier for a Dr. Pepper game break. Guys, let's show you the end of the Georgia-Georgia Tech game late in the fourth quarter. Tied at 48, Georgia inside the five-yard line. Japs or Sanks? You tell me, does he fumble the ball or does the ground cause the fumble? Well, it was called a fumble in an overtime. Luke Manjet, the 38-yard field goal. Georgia Tech upsets Georgia 51-48. to Fabulous day for Joe Hamilton, guys. I'll tell you what, Artie, I don't think that was a fumble. I don't either. I think oh, the ground that caused call. that one. But I was glad to hear you say that our man Joe Hamilton had a good day, Kevin. Now the Sooners take over, leading 24-7. to 10-19 left to play in the ballgame. Trying to snap a two-game losing streak to the Cowboys. Don't you like rivalries like this oh, at the end best. of the year? Georgia, the Georgia Tech, Vanderbilt, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Arizona, Arizona State. This is all great stuff. Well, a penalty flag was thrown on the far sideline, and I think that's a sideline penalty against the Cowboys of OSU. Well, Rob Ryan out there giving the officials a piece of his mind. Boy, well, is that frustrating for a coach. Oh, yeah. on the sidelines. The officials right, don't want to talk to you. On Oklahoma State, their second in the game. Charge timeout against Oklahoma State. Boy, that hurts. Yeah, especially in this particular game situation. Absolutely. You know, you're going to need those timeouts at the end. Hey, you go back to this game and you see the little things. The punt that Terrence Richardson got inside the five-yard line, maybe should have let it go into the end zone. A, a kickoff that shouldn't have been returned that was taken out of the end zone, gave him bad field position. All the little things in this football game as Bob Simmons gives the head linesman, Don Caprell, a little piece of his mind. All the little things they'll have added up, and that's added up on the scoreboard for a Sooner lead. And also fumbling at the beginning of the Absolutely. game when they had a chance to go in and score after Oklahoma fumbled. I think uh, Colorado and Nebraska can relate to that. Daniels trying to get to the outside, and he does. Inside the 40, going to be marked out at the 38-yard line. I'll tell you, your hat has to be off to that young man, Brandon Daniels. Talk about perseverance deluxe. But you know, Bobby Stoops is smart because he came in here and he said, guys like Brandon Daniels are good athletes. Let's put them to use. Let's get them the football. Let's put them in a position where they can be successful. And he's 5'10". He's 213 pounds. He looks like he weighs 220 yeah. when you see him out on the field. He's an excellent, excellent athlete. 
Heifel, the quick look in, pass is complete, inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line to Curtis Fagan, who's also had a good game. Fagan's second reception of the afternoon, but of course he has one touchdown pass. Good for 79, 73 yards. Well, one thing Bob Stoops is doing here, he's sending out a message to recruits. Hey, if you want to be in a good passing offense and utilize college as a training ground for the National Football League in the passing game, come to the University of Oklahoma because that's what we're going to do here into the year 2000. We're going to throw the football. How about this for carrying the football? Big Stocker McDougal. We the fridge, number two. We saw it at practice the other day, <laughs> and everybody said, is that a mistake? But no, Oklahoma put the big 6'6", 363-pounder <laughs> in the backfield, and he gets the first down. And look at his coach, Mark Mangino. He loves it. He taught him everything he knows, running the football. The big guy gets up in there, boom. Oh, oh. now Massey. Who was that? That was Edwards. Adam Edwards. He's six foot two fifteen. He gets run over by six six, three hundred and sixty three pounds. That'll leave a mark. Look at big old Mark Mangino there. He's happy, and everybody's going to have a lot of fun with that oh, one in yeah. film study. That was good for a first down. A little bobble job. They able to get his hands on the football and usher it out of bounds. Quentin Griffin. And you know what, Ron? That'll be on every highlight tonight. Yeah, absolutely. The big guy carrying the football. Well, let's not get testy here, gentlemen. Let's think about this. There's a penalty flag thrown, and Jack Golden, who already had one block at the end of a kickoff that shouldn't have been, he gets flagged again. He has been really starting to play well for the Cowboys, too. you got to keep your emotions under control, as this man has. Now the Sun City Golf Tournament, the Sun City Golf Challenge coming to Fox Sports Net. Sergio Garcia, Colin Montgomery, Ernie Ells, everybody going after the top prize of $1 million. And we'll have all the coverage getting underway at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific, this coming Thursday, right here on Fox Sports Net. Of course, the inaugural challenge was back in 1981. Guys like Paven, Faldo, and Price have all etched their name in the trophy. It's going to take a while to calm down Jack Golden. Yeah. He's still hot over on the sidelines. Well, the Sooners knocking on the door again. Ball is on the 16-yard line, first and 10. And Heifel continuing the throw. Little shuttle pass to Griffin. Adam Edwards brings him down, but not before the youngster gets down to the 7, and another penalty flag is thrown. That was thrown in the end zone right on the K of Oklahoma. I think Jacoby Shepard may be the culprit for Oklahoma State. There was some pushing and shoving going on. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. Dead ball. Personal foul on the offense. On setting foul. You know, Bob Simmons and Rob Ryan might want to take a timeout here and just get everybody a little bit calmed down before this game gets out of control. And sometimes yeah. when you coach aggressively, the emotion gets carried over, but you got to keep the Absolutely. level head like you talked about before, Ron. Second down and one. Griffin slips right as he got the football. Or Seth Luttrell, I should say, slipped as he got the football. It's gotten very cool here. The sun's gone behind the stadium, and when that happens here at OU, it seems like the field gets a little damp. The guys are starting to slip around a little bit. Yeah, but up until now, it's been absolutely yeah, oh, perfect. perfect. Could not have a better day for football, and Bobby Stoops knows it. And like we talked about, if he wins his game today, he ends up 7-4, and four, and he would get my vote as the coach of the year this year in the Big 12. He's done a brilliant job of coming in here and turning Oklahoma back on the winning track. He said this is not a rebuilding year. They're going to make things happen now, and he has done that. They are going bowling this year. Down to the five-yard line. That'll be good for a first down. Banging away again is Latrell. You know, Stoops, like you talked about, has redirected this team. Watch what happens here. It's just a good job of running up inside. It's a good job of trench blocking by the Oklahoma offensive line. They have a first and goal to go. Ball is inside the five-yard line. OU, after a little rough start, rough start, they've gotten things together. Down 
to the three-yard line. Latrell. Well, the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Morrison. The coordinating producer of college football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. And tonight's game and throughout the season, the games have been produced by one of the best. Mike Felling and directed by one of the best. Ken Fouts. Mike and Ken, we thank you. College Football Saturday Studio Show produced by Lloyd Maxson. Directed by Joe Whitus. The Vice President of Field Operations is Andrea Jenkins. Sam Polis, our spotter and stat man up in the booth for the last, I guess, four or five years we've been together. Great to have Kevin and Kellen on site. Brad Zager in the truck. Larry Rogers, all our crew. Thank you, guys. You made this year fun. Second down and goal from the three. Whistles are being blown. Now, the big guy was in the backfield again. You know, they're going to give the ball to him and just try to pound it up inside. Now, I didn't see him catch a pass in practice, so no. I don't think we're going to get that you know, <laughs> extensive with this whole operation with him in the backfield. Well, now we got a timeout. Stalker wants to convince Bob Stoops to let him carry it in. We'll step aside. We'll be back. It appears as though, barring a miracle, that Oklahoma will go bowling this year. After a drought and well-deserved, they lead it 24-7 to with 6.50 to play in the ball game, and they're about to score with second down and goal from the three. And the Google's back in his tackle position, so we'll probably see a run behind him or away from him. And OSU does a nice job. Luttrell cannot get back to the original line of scrimmage. Jack Golden is the one who really cut through the line and strung things out for Bob, keeping Bob Stoops squad from going in. One guy I forgot to thank, Mike Ugachoni, despite the fact he's a huge soccer fan. We'll thank him anyway. You know, Bob Stoops comes from the University of Florida at Kansas State for a long time. He was Steve Spurrier's defensive coordinator for three years. They won 32 games, lost five with him at Florida. He was very prepared to take on a job of this magnitude. Well, McDougal again in the backfield. He's got it. Rambling. No, Heifel keeps it for the end zone. Touchdown! What a great play take by Heifel. What a great call by Mike Leach. Everybody in the ballpark thought the big guy was going to get the football. Including me. Including that man right there, Bob Simmons. A great call and great execution that time of a bootleg. You know, Oklahoma's got it going. And Heifel sees the end zone, not known for his speed. He dives over and gets the ball into the end zone. Excellent execution. Duncan tacking on the extra point, and it is good. 6.06 left to play. Josh Heifel, who just might get the newcomer of the year offensively in the Big 12, has put him up to a 31-7 lead. And Kevin and Kellen, it has been a great year in the Big 12 and in college football. It has been a fantastic year in college football. Been another great year for us on College Football Saturday. Want to thank all the cast and crew and the folks who couldn't be here today whose faces you don't see every day on College Football Saturday. A great crew that we had all year long. We had some great games on the net. I'm looking forward to even a bigger and better year next year. No question about that. And always great being next to this guy <laughs> arguing college football all year long. And this game, meanwhile, has been a great game and a great way to cap it off. Bedlam 99, a great way to cap off a great year. Guys, back up to you. How about this, Kevin? It was 18 years ago this week that your partner caught five touchdown passes against the Oakland Raiders. Not bad, Kellen. That was all in a day's work, wasn't it? Leave those Raiders Just alone. another day at the <laughs> office. You go in and do what you have to do. <laughs> five touchdowns against the Raiders. Who cares? It's no big deal. <laughs> hey, come on, Kellen. See, there, there he Artie goes. the Raiders. Leave those Raiders, Leave Raiders alone. <laughs> little but, shot at Artie. Yeah, good. Oh, he's always taking shots at me. I'm going to get a complex up here. You know, that's well, why we'll have to bring him in the studio again <laughs> next year. We'll bring next year. Artie in and we'll gang up on him. By the way, I had good games against USC in college. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> give me a break. Hey, you guys did a wonderful job this year Thank seriously you. and you're lot, entertaining guys. and you got a lot of fans across the country thanks a lot guys but the missouri underwear that kellen wears too much well osu in a big big hole and they're going to keep this one right in the end zone not going to bring it out the cowboys racked by injuries this year suspensions this last week it has been a difficult year. Still had a chance to get a bowl, but it's slipping away this afternoon. You know, at the beginning of the show, we talked about Oklahoma State 
having to make big plays with their trick plays, and they have been unable to do that today. Give the credit, though, to Oklahoma's defense. Guys like Keanu Wright, guys that have played, they're going to play their last game here today, have played their heart out, but it's been all Sooners for today. And OSU with a football. Lindsey keeps it. Still on his feet, dives forward, and he pays the penalty. Well, the Big 12 yesterday, those of you who may have had a little too much turkey and had a little turkey hangover, how about Texas a and Congratulations to R.C. Slocum, who found it very difficult this year, was taking a lot of bad press, but, boy, a, he's a good football coach, and they showed it. Mac Brown, disappointing loss. Of course, he will play Nebraska Saturday in San Antonio for the Big 12 championship game as Frank Solich's squad just withstands a big charge by Gary Barnett's, Gary Barnett's Colorado Buffaloes, who had a whale of a comeback yesterday. What a good football game. OSU just running the football straight ahead. You know, both games were good games yesterday, Go, going back to that. But it shows you what type of players there are, what type of coaches, and the caliber of teams in the Big 12 this year. Ron Calcagney there, you know, looking, looking frustrated as any coordinator would yep. be. He certainly expected to score points today. The seven points for, for Oklahoma State came on an interception. Less than 200 yards total offense for the Oklahoma State Cowboys this afternoon. Inside of five minutes. OSU just running the football. You know, you know, Ron, we, we, we talked at the beginning about the game plan for Oklahoma. They, they, they had to contain Lindsey, and they had to contain and control Richardson, and they certainly did. Now, Bob Simmons is going to go back to the drawing board for next year uh -huh. because he has Lindsey back. And a healthy Lindsey equates a very potent offensive unit here with the Oklahoma State. Very much so. You know, it's one of those what-if syndromes with uh, Tony. He had so much confidence after spring ball this year. Lindsey's pass is going to be picked off at OU's Mike Woods. Nothing but touchdown. <laughs> 43 yards and a two-game win streak by Oklahoma State is now history. When it rains, oh, it pours. Boy. With 4.13 to go, Tim Duncan. The extra point is good. Woods with the interception for the touchdown. Just over four minutes left. The Sooners lead it 38 to 7. Maybe a little miscommunication, Artie. Big time communication. Watch Hal here. He's going to run down the field, but Lindsey's going to throw the ball to the outside, and Hal continues running down the field. Mike Woods, number two, reads it perfectly, and it's throw and catch, but it's throw and catch to the wrong guy. Here you see a picture of Hal. He looks. He's going to go. I'm going to go deep. I'm going to go to the inside. But where's the football? The football is thrown in the flat to Mike Woods. What can you say if you're the head coach and those type of things happen? You got some young men out there trying to make plays, but not so fast. Terrence Marshall enjoying the situation. You can see the Oklahoma defense, four sacks, three interceptions, and a fumble recovery. The kickoff is low. Nathan Howe takes a big hit. Ethan Howe as he crosses the 15 up to the 17-yard line. Well, this is a great homecoming for the 1974-1975 yeah. National Championship team because, as we talked about, Bobby Stoops has come in here. He's embraced this community. Barry Switzer is back involved in the Oklahoma program big time, and so are a bunch of players that played here in the past. The Oklahoma family is pulling back together after a couple of down years. Uh, he said he was just amazed by the OU tradition as B.J. Tiger, number 
13. The sophomore out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, is checked into the lineup to run the quarterback spot for the Cowboys. He had a lot of playing time this year as Tony Lindsay was injured. And they'll keep it on the ground, running straight ahead. Reggie White. But you know, Ron, this, as you well know, because you did the radio here, this is a proud, proud program. This is one of the best football programs traditionally mm -hmm. in the United States today. And just taking a step back the last couple of years, but Bobby Stoops was hired to get it going forward again. Well, one thing he wanted to do is get discipline. He wanted consistency. Some of these guys have had six line coaches, a bunch of offensive and defensive coordinators. They just wanted to have some type of consistency. Well, you know, the previous five years prior to this year, Oklahoma was 22-33-1, which was 10th in the Big 12 in that five-year span if you took the records of all the teams. So Bobby Stoops knew when he took this job, he had a lot of pressure on him, and he had a huge task in front of him. And so far, so good for Bobby Stoops and his staff. And he's not doing it alone. No. Mike Leach, Jonathan Hayes, Mark Mangino. He's got some excellent coaches on his staff. Cowboys just going to run the football. Reggie White getting some playing time. The sophomore out of Liberty, Texas. And they just know that this season is over. And it has been a difficult one. Uh, Reggie White, the leading rusher, 27 yards for the Cowboys. He's done it on only five carries. Tony Lindsay, 12 carries, minus seven yards. Most of that coming from sack yardage, however. Sooners showing a blitz. Here they come. Tiger keeps it. Up to the 40. Still some running room. Gets outside, close to the 50, before Rodney Rideau runs him out of bounds. And the man who has not had to brave any inclement weather this year hasn't even had to use an overcoat. The best sideline reporter in all of college football, Eric Clemens. Eric? I tell you what, pretty indicative of this season. Of course, we love getting up there all year in the crowds and showing you the students and the enthusiasm. But the danger, I mean, down on the field in Denver when tear gas is flowing, I'm going to be down here. All these fans expected to storm the field. Where are our superstars, Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow? under protection somewhere else. I'm down here on the field. That's just indicative of this season, guys. <laughs> You're right. Leave those guys alone. Pass is almost intercepted, incomplete, intended for how. Of course, they show up in a game where it's 70 degrees and sunny, right? Final two minutes and 14 seconds. Second down and 10 for the Cowboys. Just about at midfield on their own 48-yard line. Bob Simmons right in the middle of recruiting. Most of the coaches were out and about last night for both schools. And, and you know, for Bob Simmons and for Bob Stoops, it's not going to get any easier right. because this is a league that's already very good, and a year from now, it might be the best league in all of college football. It's got a lot of excellent head coaches. It's got a lot of quarterbacks coming back, and I think that's as important as anything that you have your quarterbacks. Yeah, I think I think this piece of string is going to keep 75,000 yeah. people off the field. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. No chance. <laughs> he looks like the type that would say, go on. <laughs> and he's also by himself. I know. Where's his help? <laughs> I hope you, your health care is paid up, buddy. <laughs> well, Tiger was sacked on the play by Daryl Bright, the junior out of Tulsa, Washington, setting up a third down and 13, and we have whistles on the field. And Oklahoma's called a timeout, probably because they didn't have enough people on the field. Well, Artie, you know, a lot of people talked about the Big 12 this year and Nebraska and Kansas State, but your thoughts on the conference? My thought that the conference is a strong conference. I'm not sure it's the best conference, but I'm not sure you can say any conference is right. the best conference. It's arguably one of the top two or three in all of college football. I like the coaches. You've got some great head coaches. The Gary Barnetts, the Frankie Solichs, the Bill Snyders, the Mac Browns, the R.C. Slocums, the Bobby Stoops. There is some high-powered people that are coaching in this conference. The other thing, as I started to say before, there's a lot of quarterbacks coming back, and I love right. the defense that's being played in the Big 12 because they have set a standard around the country for great, great defense. 
Look at the records here in the Big 12 North. Nebraska's 10 and 1. Kansas State is 10 and 1. Colorado is 6 and 5 now. You look at the South. Texas is 9 and 3. Uh, A&M is 8 and 3. There are some excellent, excellent football teams in this conference, and there will be again excellent football teams next year. Oh, you come to the blitz. The pass is almost picked off by Mike Woods. He's taken one to the house already against Bob Simmons's orange and white of the Cowboys. Almost had another. You know, Ron, one more thing. I just want to thank all of our cameramen this year because pictures play, you know, paint the words for us. And we have as good a cameraman as there are in the country and the pictures that they give us yeah. to talk about. And guys, have a great holiday and thank you very much. John Calhoun will make sure all our guys show up and make sure everything's working and make sure that I have suckers on Friday. <laughs> That's Tootsie Pops. Thank you, John. Now the Cowboys are going to be forced to kick it away. Batcher is back. Returnable from the 20. Spinning around. Look out. This could be another seven. One man to beat. Patcher for the 20. Looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. J.T. Thatcher, the junior from right here in Norman, Oklahoma, adds one more. You know, Thatcher's a big old guy now. He weighs 213 pounds. He gets rumbling down the field like that. He's hard to bring down. As you see Jonathan Hayes right there giving him a hug. Jonathan Hayes is a special teams coach, ex-Kansas City chief tight end. Gives that guy a big hug. Well, a little too much celebration for the Sooners. They are penalized. They're going to be pushed back. JT, you're in the books. I think the special teams this year, at least the games that we've seen and done, have been outstanding for Oklahoma. Absolutely. We saw them score 40-plus uh, Texas A&M on this field and shocked the Aggies. We expected this one to be a little bit closer. The snap is bad. This don't get hurt as Duncans takes a seat. That's the only thing that's gone wrong in the second half. J.T. Thatcher takes the punt for the touchdown. And the Sooners lead it 44-7 in Norman. Back to Norman, Oklahoma, where a sellout crowd of well over 75,000 on hand to see the Oklahoma Sooners snap a two-game losing streak to the Oklahoma State Cowboys and have assured themselves of a bowl that Bob Simmons has seen his bowl hopes slip away. They will not be going bowling in 1999. The question for Oklahoma remains which bowl, and that probably will not be decided until the Texas-Nebraska game a week from today in San Antonio at the Big 12 Championship game, which is sold out in that end. They do have a chance of going back to San Antonio for the Alamo Bowl. From the goal line. Up to the 15-yard line, and that's about as far as he's going to go. Let's take a look at JT one more time on the return of the punt. Thatcher catches the football, and he does what all good returners do. He doesn't go east and west. He goes north and south. But he weighs 213 pounds, and he can run over a couple of tackles. It was good for 81 yards. And he smelled the end zone there Absolutely. at the end. There was no denying number 15, the end zone. And now OSU has 66 seconds to run out. You know, Ron, and that's great for team morale because everybody from the first string to the second string to the third string here at Oklahoma tonight has taken part right. in scoring and taken part in this victory. Tigers running. And he is going to be dropped at the 22-yard line, and the clock runs with 57 seconds left to play. Well, partner, another year. Great job again, Ron. We love you working what, with you. We love here. You we, make it look easy. We've had a, a fun year. We've had some great games, and 
memorable ones, of course, Texas Tech upsetting Texas A&M. That was just a fun game to do. And our best is Spike Dykes, our good friend. Spike, we wish you the best, my friend. We are going to miss you. Yeah, hit him straight and long. <laughs> yeah, really. I told him uh, at the Texas game, I said, uh, hey, I want a piece of you in September now. No excuses. Rick Neuheisel told me last year, don't ever challenge Spike on the golf course. And Bob Stoops gets, now that's a bad Gatorade throw. That was weak. Got Scott Anderson, the trainer, missed Bob Stoops. I don't think he wanted it. He's got Jonathan Hayes standing next to him. Jonathan's got to step in and protect him. I don't think Jonathan Look at big old Jonathan right there. Hey, step in and throw a block. He used to do that when he was the Chiefs. Former great NFL player, and that's going to do it. The Oklahoma Sooners have defeated the Oklahoma State Cowboys. The final once again, 44 to 7. And Artie, they get to go to a bowl, and that man, Bob Stoops, will deserve all the credit. All defense tonight, in my opinion, by the Oklahoma Sooners. They set the tempo. They never allowed Oklahoma State's offense to get going. Everybody was in on this one. Once again, the final score, 44 to 7. Breakdown.